for more than $2 billion to deal with the surge in unaccompanied children from Central America flooding into the United States along its southern border. Obama will make the request for emergency funding in a letter today, asking Congress to act when it returns from a holiday recess on July 7th, according to a White House official. Secretary of State John Kerry will travel to Central America this week for a visit that will include the inauguration of Panama's new president and that is expected to include meetings on the crisis with Central American leaders. In addition, Obama will seek greater authority for U.S. immigration officials to speed up the deportation of children caught crossing from countries such as Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. The request will mark a major step in Obama's attempt to gain control of a chaotic scene on the southern border with Mexico where tens of thousands of children have crossed without parents, supposedly straining resources and creating a political and humanitarian crisis. Obama will ask Congress to increase penalties for the so-called coyotes who smuggle children across the border and then profit from it. A government official said Obama will also request a sustained border security surge through enhanced domestic enforcement, along with an increase in immigration judges to more speedily adjudicate the cases of recent border crossers. Obama will step up efforts with Central American countries to repatriate migrants who were returned to their home countries and address the root causes of migration. And the official also said he will seek the resources necessary to appropriately detain, process, and care for children and adults. State Department officials declined to confirm details of Kerry's agenda. His meetings follow a visit on June 20th by Vice President Joe Biden to Guatemala City, during which Central American presidents pressed for Washington to improve migrant rights. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, Turkish officials say their government continues to oppose Kurdish independence and wants a unity government in Iraq that would ensure Iraq's territorial integrity. Opposition to Kurdish independence anywhere in the world has been a long-standing policy of the Turkish government, but with close ties to Iraq's Kurdistan regional government and some serious business interests behind secession, there was growing speculation that Turkey was warming to the idea. It was also believed that endorsing secession from Maliki's Iraq, with which Turkey doesn't have very warm ties, would improve the Erdogan government's standing with their own Kurdish minority leading up to the elections. So far, Israel is the only country to formally endorse Kurdish secession, and with the U.S. loudly opposed to the idea, there was likely pressure on Turkey to toe the line as a NATO member. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. I mean, it's just so hard to believe that it's really all gone. It was in this living room three weeks ago that the Talbot family discovered their DVR had suddenly and inexplicably crashed, deleting more than five years' worth of recorded live events and miniseries. I keep having flashbacks to that day, to that moment when I realized everything was gone. You know, you hear stories about people who mismanage their device settings, but you never really think it could happen to you. Honestly, it feels like some sort of a dream, like... When I wake up, I'll be able to just go downstairs, turn on the TV, and all the episodes will be there again, as if nothing had ever happened. Friends and family of the Talbots have pledged their support, organizing DVD donations and offering passwords to online streaming services while the family struggles to move on. We know that we'll never be able to replace all the hours of programming that we had, but I think in the end, we'll be just fine. As long as we have our five seasons of Seinfeld on DVD. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. And of course, you can bring up anything that you want to discuss. You just dial on in toll free here. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. You can reach out and get in touch that way if you prefer. Skype username is lrn.fm. Of course, lots to uh, talk about this evening. Hang on one second. Say again. 
my producer is telling, giving me some information. Uh, again, the uh, the toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty free. So you can take control of the airwaves. And, you know, there's a story that I had been uh, wanting to get out there since prior to. Uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and I kind of set it aside because usually during Pork Fest, we have about mm, zero opportunity to talk about news of the day. I don't even bother to look at the news of the day since normally Pork Fest is very kind of like an interview centric show for Free Talk Live, and every now and then we'll even get a phone call. So there's like no time for talking about issues, etc. But I just thought this one was so unique. Uh, it had to be discussed, and it was worth holding on to. The story is from the Daily Mail in the UK about Patrick Sullivan. And it's actually somebody that we have discussed previously here on Free Talk Live. It's an update in his case. A judge on Thursday sentenced a former Colorado sheriff to 15 months in prison for repeatedly violating his probation in a meth-for-sex case saying the lawman who was once regarded as a hero had exhausted his opportunities to reform. Patrick Sullivan was sentenced to two years after, or excuse me, was sentenced two years after pleading guilty to plying young men with methamphetamine in exchange for sexual favors. This guy was the sheriff of Arapahoe County, Colorado, and I believe, yeah, that is the, uh, the Denver Sheriff's Office, the Denver Area Sheriff's Office. So this guy was in charge of a major, major law enforcement operation named Top Sheriff in 2001. And now he's going to jail for 15 more months. And I don't know what his original uh, sentence was because he was out on probation. Now, maybe they only gave him probation initially. I'm speculating there. I don't recall the, the detail in the case. Garrett Ian joining me here tonight on the second microphone. Good evening. Welcome, Garrett. Great to have you here. Uh, so we're talking about Patrick Sullivan, former sheriff of Arapahoe County, Colorado. This guy, he's going back to jail. Our friend Rich Paul is in jail right now for violation of probation. And, you know, this is yet another example of how, how easy it is to get what they call the VOP. Sure, you think a law enforcement official would know all of these things that could trip him up, but it seems that there's such a number of things that one couldn't possibly know all of them. The 71-year-old was once named the nation's top sheriff and won praise for his leadership in the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Department in the Denver suburbs. Sullivan said in court on Thursday before Judge William Sylvester issuing, uh, issued the sentence, quote, I have a drug problem, and I have had a drug problem for some time. I have only myself to blame. Sullivan was arrested in December of 2011 after authorities arranged a sting that revealed that he was trading methamphetamine for sex. Months earlier, a 911 caller reported Sullivan was at his house trying to get three recovering addicts back on drugs. So, I mean, this guy, in case it's not real clear to you the way they're saying things here, he was trading methamphetamine for sex. This guy's a meth dealer. That's just a... Make it clear what the article is saying. When you trade sex, you know, giving someone methamphetamine and they give you sex, you're a meth dealer. Mm -hmm. Whether you trade the methamphetamine for cash or sex is immaterial. I believe some people would make the distinction. I know New Hampshire law does not, with any drugs, it's a distribution charge. Whether or not there's cash involved is irrelevant. But in some states, I believe there is, an, uh, if not an additional penalty, at least it's analyzed differently by the law if you sell something versus if you trade it. That's a good point, and I don't know what the, the law is in uh, in Colorado. He um, did plead guilty to possession of methamphetamine and solicitation of a prostitute. Sylvester, at the time, had sentenced him to 30 days in jail. So that was the number I was looking for earlier, and two years of probation. That so, seems pretty light for methamphetamine distribution by law enforcement. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, what do you think you would get if you got busted for not suggesting you should or that anyone should necessarily sell methamphetamine, but... Yeah, the average meth dealer is probably going to be treated a little more harshly than 71-year-old former sheriff uh, Peter, or excuse me, Patrick Sullivan. Months later, or excuse me, a sentence of 30 days in jail and two years probation. So he was out on probation. He violated that probation and is now going back in for 15 months. The courtroom erupted in applause on Thursday as deputies handcuffed Sullivan and took him into custody, though some had hoped for a harsher sentence. Sullivan told the judge he was benefiting from an inpatient drug treatment program that he recently enrolled in after missing uh, or failing dozens of drug tests. According to the story at Daily Mail, 
His probation officer, Hallie Miller, said his purported efforts to reform were a front, and he continued to lie and make excuses for his risky behavior. He blamed positive meth tests on everyone from a doctor who prescribed him pills to a neighbor who said that he drugged him at a barbecue, said Miller. In January, Sullivan left the state without permission, and then in May, he tested positive again for meth. He sees himself as above the law, said the probation officer. I'm not sure what the time period is in which methamphetamine would clear from one system. I don't know either. I've heard that it's much faster than cannabis. That's the easiest to detect. I believe that's true. I think a lot of the the, the harder drugs tend to tend to not stay. Uh, the residue or whatever you want to call it, the, the remaining elements of them, the evidence, uh, doesn't stick around as long. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that probably means he was using meth fairly often. Sure, an addiction level. Uh, before his arrest, Sullivan was known as an anti-drug crusader with a record so distinguished the county named the jail after him. Wow. So he actually spent time sitting in the very same jail that had been named after him. Oh, what an honor. The National Sheriff's Association tapped him as its top sheriff in 2001, and he continued to command respect even after he resigned the following year to oversee security for a school district. In 1989, Sullivan was hailed as a hero during a gunman's rampage. He rescued two deputies after crashing his truck through a fence and protected them while they were loaded into the vehicle. But his court case revealed a darker picture. He would develop relationships with vulnerable young men, help them find jobs and get out of jail, and then provide them the drug. Unlike other addicts, Sullivan was on the forefront in the 1990s as one of the most vocal critics of the meth epidemic. He, of all people, said the first assistant attorney general, Robert Shapiro, the first time he tried it knew it was nothing more than a poison. Mr. Sullivan chose this substance for no good reason whatsoever. Well, you know, it would be interesting to hear his story. And, uh, you know, this this particular telling of the story is not giving his side. How does it happen that... The top sheriff of 2001, according to, you know, the Sheriff's Association of America or whatever they were called, National Sheriff's Association. How does the top sheriff get into being a meth addict and or meth dealer? How does that happen and how long had he been doing it for? Yeah, there's a question as to what makes one the top sheriff and whether or not that's the sort of thing that makes one a good methamphetamine distributor. Well, it's it's certainly true that if you're the sheriff, you are generally untouchable. I mean, mm-hmm. nobody's going to mess with the sheriff. Where I come from in uh, Manatee County, there were always rumors about the sheriff there who, as a drug dealer. Like, people who claimed to be family members of the sheriff of Manatee County, multiple people said that this guy was the top dealer in Manatee County, that he ran the port of Manatee, and that... You know, if you were trying to do business in Manatee County and you weren't one of his approved dealers, if you weren't somebody slinging his product, then they'd go after you. Well, it puts you in a position of a lot of control and and also the networking that a law enforcement official would have. He's connected both with the uh, law enforcement field and also with the criminals that he's prosecuting or not necessarily prosecuting, but uh, incarcerating if the sheriff is running the jail as they do in many places. His attorney, Kevin McGreevy, argued that the former sheriff had been unfairly scrutinized by probation officers because of his position. Some who had worked uh, with him hoped that probation would let him redeem his tarnished image. I'm not shocked anymore, former Boulder County Sheriff George Epps said Wednesday. What it tells me is a switch flipped somehow, and it hasn't flipped back. Now, I want to come back. We can talk more about the story here, but the guy didn't actually hurt anybody, right? Like, he just sold some meth. It sounds like he may have been taking advantage of people applying them with drugs. He may have been, but they put themselves in that position. Let's talk about that when we return. 855 450 free. Did this guy do something criminal? Did he do something wrong? Did he harm others? You tell me. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and help 
helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. June 24, 2014, gold opened at 1322.70. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1370.62, 685.31 for a half ounce, or 342.66 for a quarter ounce. That's 1370.62, 685.31, and 342.66. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. Former Arapahoe County Sheriff is going back to jail. He had to spend thirty days there originally. Got out on two years probation. Why? Well, he was selling methamphetamine, and this is the former top sheriff of all of the United States in two thousand one. And you have to wonder because this isn't the first time some sheriff has been caught for some kind of terrible. Well, or what is purported as a terrible crime. In this case, he didn't actually hurt anybody. He just sold some methamphetamine. But, you know, a meth dealer isn't exactly looked at as a, as a loved individual. Meth isn't a particular... It's a pillar of the community. Yeah, you know, people are going to use meth. And I've, I've known people who claim... I, know, I knew one lady who claimed that she used meth for a period of time in her life and that uh, she was more productive as a result of it and she only used it to, like, clean her house and things like that. 
So, you know, maybe there are responsible meth users out there. You just don't tend to hear those stories. I mean, there was this one guy who called Free Talk Live once and talked about how he is a heroin user but only uses on weekends. So he's like a weekend warrior heroin user. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to disbelieve somebody's story. I mean, there's all different levels of drug use out there, but certainly seems like meth and heroin tend to be associated with bad times, with bad associations. Sure. Those two are, I'd say, heavily associated with addiction as well, that they're not, it doesn't seem that there's this aura of uh, recreational, occasional use with them. It seems that people are. If it they doesn't use them, that seem they would like it, be using but them. you have to wonder, like, what is the breakdown of of meth users? How many of them are actually, you know, they've got it under control. They're not actually addicted to it. Versus how many of them are addicted to it? I don't know. I haven't known very many people that w- would have admitted to using meth if they have used meth. Uh, or I don't know anybody who's meth. Use meth. We'll come back to the discussion, and if you want to chime in here, what's your habit? Maybe you're actually a former meth user or a current meth user. Want to hear about, you know, if you've got it, uh, if you're an addict, are you an addict? I mean, can you admit that you have a problem, or is it something that can be controlled? By the way, if you need focus and you're feeling fatigued, you should learn about modafinil from modup.net. You don't need the illegal drugs, although in some countries I don't know what the legal status of modafinil is, so you need to do your research. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships modafinil worldwide. Studies are showing one in five students using this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out modup.net. You can get fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. And if you order with Bitcoin, you'll save 33%. Modup.net, M-O-D-U-P.net. To make the deal even better, use code FTL. You'll get 10 free tablets with your order. That's, again, code FTL at modup.net. And I did get a testimonial from a listener who has tried the modafinil. He says that he felt uh, more uh, kind of like, I don't remember the exact word, he was like alert or aware without being like a high buzzing sensation. So he, he had more clarity, I think, uh, without actually feeling like he was getting high. So that's a good thing. It means you're going to get things done. Uh, Modafinil, go to modup.net, use code FTL and learn more there. Uh, Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. There's lots of interesting news out there and actually some related news to this story. We're talking about a Colorado former sheriff who has uh, been sentenced to go back to jail for violation of probation. He's going in for another 15 months, and he's 71. Now, I don't imagine that, you know, jail isn't easy at age 30, and jail isn't easy at any time. It's never comfortable in jail. The, The mattresses aren't exactly plush. So I can't imagine how much more difficult jail could be for somebody in their 70s. Well, as much as I believe there may be a threat to people who are considered law enforcement or different classes that may be ranked low within the jail culture or the prison culture, I would imagine that with the thin blue line mentality that a lot of corrections officers have that this person would be given a large amount of protective custody. Special They'd be segregated treatment. from other inmates. Sure. Yeah, that would make sense. That it, that tends to be how they handle uh, police officers who are going to jail. Johnny Ray joining us uh, this evening. Welcome, Johnny Ray. Thank you, Ian. Good, good to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. So, uh, former sheriff over in Arapahoe County, the Denver area. This guy, this guy was named the top sheriff in the United States by the National Sheriffs Association in 2001. Uh, he had a jail named after him in Arapahoe County. This is a major player in the world of sheriffs. I mean, this is a big county. It's big population. His department is large, and it makes you wonder how common is this. Because I told you about some of the rumors around Sarasota, Florida, where I was growing up about Manatee County, the county just to the north, was supposedly the whole drug operation there was run by the sheriff. And I heard that from more than one person. I also heard from a source who should know these things, that old Joe Arpaio out in uh, the Phoenix, Arizona area, for all his tough talk about drug uh, enforcement and all of his locking up of drug dealers and users, that he is also one of the, uh, the kind of underground sheriffs who's slinging drugs in his county. Now, I have no evidence for that statement whatsoever beyond rumor from somebody whose word that I trusted in that particular department. Somebody with some experience in the, in the drug trade. 
Well, I know that the drug war was being fought especially hard in Bradenton, which is uh, right there in Manatee County, mm-hmm. and that would contribute to the theory that there is uh, law enforcement corruption, that there's more infighting, and that uh, the people involved in that in that uh, industry are less safe and secure for that reason. But did this guy actually hurt anyone? I mean, meth has a real bad rap, and I am no fan of meth, heroin, cocaine. I'm not interested in those those kind of drugs. I like I like my entheogens. I like you know a little bit of uh, psychedelics, but the the whole stimulant thing you know doesn't do anything for me. I don't know about you, Johnny Ray, but uh, anybody have any experience with any of this stuff, like the hard stuff, methamphetamine? I've always avoided stimulants or anything that's not natural. Uh, Ian, I was wondering about whether to jump in uh, and answer that question. You told me once, when in doubt, leave it out. Mm. However, I will go ahead and say that. That usually applies to uh, profanity, that rule. (laughs) Um, uh, I've smoked meth before, and -hmm. I've smoked crack before. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, meth was more, it seemed, seemed more addictive. I, I probably smoked hmm. meth for about six months and then I kind of lost contact with the guy that, that I was smoking meth with and I didn't smoke it anymore. How often were you smoking it during those six months? Uh, a couple of times a week. So would you call that an addiction? Uh, I mean, if I've, it's not an everyday thing, is it an addiction? I've, I felt like I was addicted to it, mm-hmm. but... But n- not so much, I guess. I was. Did you ever I've, steal anything to fund the addiction, or was it always something you could afford? No, I didn't. But I stole time from other people, so that time. Uh, what I mean is, there were I missed engagements because mm-hmm. I wanted to smoke meth instead. So I see. Yeah, you hurt yourself ultimately in that case. Right. Um. I've I've I, I've always been more addicted to nicotine than I was ever addicted to meth or or crack. I only smoked crack once. Hold the rest of those thoughts. Let's bring Dan on in Charleston. Dan, you've got a story you want to share, right? Uh, Good evening, Eon. Uh, I've been listening to you all about pork fats and really learned a lot. Fantastic. I want to ask you to hang on, Dan. We're going to get to you in just a moment. Can you stick with us? More with Dan from Charleston, West Virginia, listening online, and you can join us here at 855-450-FREE. Your experience with hard drug addiction. It's Free Talk Live. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Henry Ford once said, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Alex Castle here, the National Account Executive at GCN. I have the ability to customize a national radio campaign based on your budget while targeting your demographic. Contact me to find out how national radio can help your business be more profitable at 877-996-4327, extension 177. That's 877-996-4327, extension 177, and help me help you bring your business to the next level. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense, they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. 
There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Garrett. Uh, Welcome, gentlemen. Good to have you here. Mark Edge, sick. In fact, he's apparently lost his voice entirely or nearly entirely. I haven't actually heard him speak. He's only sent me text messages. So wishing him the best. Hope he hopes he gets well soon. In fact, he's not the only person who's sick after the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I hear there was something going around. Yeah, that's it. You know, it tends to happen. Everybody's shaking hands. Everybody's, you know, talking and being close. And, yeah, if something's going to spread. It's going to spread there. But it was to me, I know, even if I were sick right now, I'd still think Porkfest was worth it. Because it was great. And Johnny Ray, thank you for doing all of the work back here at uh, the studio as uh, that really kind of opened things up to make Porkfest a lot better, at least for me. So I appreciate that. Sure, you're welcome. Let's go and continue with your calls here. Also, I want to remind you about ExpressCoin. I had uh, somebody asking me on Facebook the other day, hey, what about this other website? Uh, you know, uh, what's it? Coinbase, I guess, is one of their competitors. Yeah, Coinbase, you know, they do a good job and all, but they're not fast. Coinbase takes a long time to get set up and get rolling, and uh, and it's a hassle. If you want it to be easy to get Bitcoin, ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoins. And now Dogecoin, more easy, so fast, much legal, wow, and expensive. ExpressCoin prides themselves on customer service. Their prices are awesome. In fact, I believe the $40 deal is still in effect there, where you can buy $40 or less of Bitcoin and pay no fee. No transfer, no service fee, which is amazing. Now, if you pay, you buy more than $40 worth, then you'll pay a 3% fee last time I checked, which is still an amazing price at ExpressCoin.com. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer, even cash deposit at ExpressCoin.com and grab their smartphone app while you're at it at ExpressCoin.com. Dan is back with us in Charleston, West Virginia. You're listening online via the TuneIn app, Dan. Is that right? Yes, sir. Welcome back to the air. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, uh, I've never done meth. I'm uh, too afraid of that. But uh, I am a recovering alcoholic, and right now I'm just going through opiate withdrawal. My brother uh, just finished uh, taking me up to WVU for 
outpatient detox. I'm detoxing right now as oh, we wow. speak. And it's what big. opiates were you on? Yeah. Prescription? Uh, yes. Yep. Which ones? Uh, I suffer. I suffer from leg pain, and where I work, it's kind of restaurant type, and I'm on my legs a lot. I went to three different doctors to try to get, uh, you know, results for my leg pain. I had a little minor surgery done, and their uh, solution was, you know, take Advil, uh, get a prescription from a doctor, you know, to be able to sit down or find another job, which in this day and age, hmm. not easy. And uh, a friend turned me on to it, and man, it eliminated my pain, Ooh. the mental false stimulus and all that. And a year later, uh, $9,000, $10,000 uh, less. And I, for me, it interfered with my family, my work, everything. It just slowly is like a freaking black hole. It will rob you financially, mentally financially, spiritually, at least for this addict. And I'm a true addict. It runs my family. My parents, both recovering alcoholics. Mm. I got aunts and uncles, great-grandparents. So to me, a lot of it's genetics. Some people, I think, can do this recreationally. I, I don't I'm not know them. one of them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know them. I've known The people I've known who've been into opiates have been very into opiates to the point where you know they start shooting them up. And uh, is that what you were doing? No, I never got that far. In fact, wow. I didn't even realize uh, about snorting, uh, crushing them and snorting them. I never even knew about that, which I'm grateful for because I heard that that makes it a lot harder. Uh, and the withdrawal is a lot more severe. So and, you were just uh, popping the pills I mean, then? You were just taking them orally? Yes. That was it. But I was taking quite a few a day. How many? And they are How cheap. many and what pills? Uh, I know them as Roxycodones, 30s. Mm -hmm. I was taking uh, four to five of those a day, and then the uh, I could in 10. What's the typical prescription? Do you have any idea? Did you ever get them prescribed, or was it always through the black market? No. no I, never could. I couldn't get a doctor to ever prescribe them. Or the most I ever had a doctor do was this stuff called Tremadol. And uh, it helped at first, but then, you know, nothing. Mm. So that's why I resorted to what I did, which was a big mistake. But, uh, you know, it, wow, it, that's my story. Well, you know, and I know we're yeah. just scratching the surface of your story, Dan, because as you said, you know, it's a dark, it can lead people to a very dark place. And you originally had started, like many opiate addicts, you had started originally looking for relief you were looking for relief from pain physical pain in your life which is of course frequently why these things are prescribed and i believe some opiates are even prescribed for you know after dental surgery so mm -hmm. in a lot of cases these are very very commonly prescribed some people get hooked on them during the prescription process in this case you never had a prescription you just started buying them on the black market because it seemed like they were helping you at what point did you realize that it had become a problem about four months ago and how long had you been taking them prior to the four months ago? Uh, almost this time last summer is when I started. Wow. So for many, many months That's you were uh, taking several of these per day, and it took you that long to figure out that you had a problem. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of knew, but it's like, you know, I'll, I, I can beat this thing. It's not that bad. Mm. And then before I know it, you know, it's like I'm trying to kick it, and it's like, holy doly you know i i can't and then i get desperate and it's like you know trying to hide it and it's like for me i was just trying to hide it trying to deal with it on my own and then i just broke down and i just you know couldn't take it anymore the line i felt like crap and i'm being deceitful and my conscience just couldn't take it and mentally and you're withdrawing you said you're withdrawing just, right now from opiates right now and it it's equivalent to a severe, severe, severe flu. How uh, long uh, which, have you been on the withdrawal now? How long since your last dose? Day three. Day number three. And when uh, was the last time you tried to quit, and how long did you make it? Uh, I'd say a few months ago, mm -hmm. and I, I used a lot. You know, I told work I was sick with the flu, which I showed all the signs. 
and had gone two weeks, and I know also have breathing problems, and uh, I noticed that uh, my breathing was almost like uh, one of the withdrawal symptoms, you know, I guess. Mm. Your breathing gets constricted, and it's not as relaxed when you're on the pain pills. What do one of these things cost uh, on the black market? I remember a decade ago when I knew people with opiate problems. I knew more people with opiate problems than... I remember it was like 20 bucks for 20 milligrams of uh, oxycodone. What do they go for these days? You were buying 30s. Right. 30s were running me 40 to 45. Wow. 10s were running and Yeah. But now... <laughs> four, so just let's put this in perspective. You were taking four of these things at least per day. Uh, so, you know, that's 160, 150 bucks a day uh, habit. The average person doesn't make that much money in uh, in a given day. So, what were you doing to to uh, cover the cost? A very long and hard work and saved up saving account where I, <gasps> where I've gone through about oh, thousand dollars. How much? Nine thousand. Nine to ten thousand. And you have no not much <laughs> left. Yes, but yes, I, I've got a decent amount, but. I went through, we'll say, half of it. But you all brought up drugs, and I think you are for decriminalizing them. Yes. And I wanted to share this. Story. I called in earlier. Um, yeah. Excellent. Pro- I want you to share what you have to share, but hang on, Dan. We're going to bring you back. I appreciate you being so detailed on this story. I think it's interesting. I think people need to know about this addiction. I don't know how much people are aware of it. It's a fairly, you know, it's probably more common than people think. I've known a lot of people who've had it who've been close to me in my life. So if that's any indicator, uh, and you know, I don't hang out with, uh, with dopers or anything like that. These are my friends. We're coming up. This is Free Talk Live. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. Look into the Ant Miner products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced Ant Miners are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an AntMiner today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The AntMiner line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by AntMiners. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here, 855-450-FREE. You can tell your story. We've uh, stumbled into a a drug addiction discussion, uh, specifically uh, talking with Dan in Charleston right now about prescription drug addiction. In this case, he was addicted to prescription drugs that he didn't have a prescription for, but just because you have a prescription for them doesn't mean you won't get addicted to them. There's a lot of people who, you know, they've had some sort of physical injury, they've got pain, they go into a pain clinic or doctor, and they get prescribed some sort of hydrocodone, oxycodone, whatever codone... uh, Etc. There's various different versions of these uh, these opiates. They're similar to heroin, as I understand it, and uh, more legal. But that doesn't make them less dangerous or less addictive. Many people, an ex-girlfriend of mine actually uh, had a, a severe problem with uh, with addiction just as as recently as last year. And it's it's hard, man, to to have somebody that you care about going through. A situation like that. Unlike uh, Dan, she was actually injecting it into her hand. She'd already tracked up her uh, her arms enough, and once you track up a certain area, you, you got to move on to other veins. I remember I knew a guy uh, like a decade ago who told me that he finally knew he'd gone too far with heroin when he was looking for a vein in his forehead one day uh, in the mirror trying to find a place to shoot up there. He'd already tapped out his toes between his toes his hands his uh you know his arms etc so scary stuff man we'll we'll get uh, get back to dan in charleston with his his thoughts you know and a question about the future robots when we manage to create robots that can look and act like humans that is androids will they be our slaves our masters or our partners in exploration and prosperity quantum vibe the science fiction adventure webcomic suggests the answer is all of the above As our heroes continue their epic mission to open a vast new frontier, they encounter an android slave culture on terraformed and corporatized Mars, and later join forces with a liberated android friend to avert a deadly disaster in the freewheeling asteroid belt. Quantum Vibe Volume 2 collects these adventures in a 161 full-color page printed volume, and it's available now from Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Big Head Press. Dot com. We go back to Dan in Charleston, West Virginia. Ian, Johnny, Ray, and Garrett in the studio with you, Dan. And it sounded like there was somewhere you were leading to or a, maybe a different discussion. You had told us your personal story about addiction that you're still struggling with uh, with opiates. But go ahead. What else did you want to share? Dan in Charleston. Sorry about your girlfriend, former girlfriend, and my heart goes out and my prayers, too, because it, it's a bitch. Yeah. Uh, are you there? Yeah, right here. Okay. Go ahead. Uh Okay, what a few weeks back y'all were talking about drugs, and when I was at work, my the front page of our local paper, they have a war. I don't know if y'all are aware or not, but we have severe cash. They call them cash clinics, and doctors writing these outrageous scripts and getting paid cash, mm-hmm. and these people, you know, uh, using them as currency, I guess, or whatever. You know, turn around, <laughs> selling them you know, quadrupling their money for the addicts. Well, they've been closing these and busting these doctors. And so, you know, the addicts, like a vampire, will go from one source to another. Sure. And the, the heroin usage has just 
skyrocketed in this state. And Sure, course, yeah, if you can't get your way, legal opiates, uh, you'll go and get your opiates illegally. You'll go buy heroin. Right. But they said, you know, the, the, I believe it's the Detroit gangs that are being enforced and getting the money and all that, and that the amount of death, overdoses from this, and when I was investigating and looking at my options and treatment centers and the government with these, uh, uh, what is it, uh, subs, they're called subtox or subtonin or something like that. Suboxone? And, you know, yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's like the government has its own legalized drug market. And I mean, these, there's like, I was yeah. looking in my own area, there's like 10 or 12 of these freaking clinics. And a lot packed. of the guys I mean, in jail were talking about being on Suboxone, talking about using Suboxone as a drug, as a recreational drug. From what I understand, it's slipped into jails often because mm -hmm. it's a strip, it's easy to conceal. Yeah, I mean, but the government, you know, it's like, shame on us, but, you know, we can do it, and they're making huge money off, I mean, it's... It's so insane. Yeah, well, the only but answer is, uh, to me, the only answer is, as you mentioned, decriminalization, but also legalization of, of all of the possible drugs out there. Make it so prescriptions are no longer needed to acquire these things. Because right now, you know, you dug into your savings to pay for your habit. You spent $10,000 of your personal savings and you, you you just consumed it all uh, over the period of, uh, of less than a year. And other people are robbing their own family members. They're stealing. They're breaking and entering. They're doing all kinds of dangerous things to get their hands on this stuff. My uh, ex-girlfriend, she admitted to me that she'd been stealing. She had become part of a, a ring of thieves, uh, basically, stealing things from stores. It was terrible to hear, uh, to hear these things. And, you know, this is somebody who... Uh, Thank goodness I wasn't with her during this time because I'm sure she would have stolen from me. And you know, no no one is off limits to the drug addict in a lot of ways. Absolutely not. Absolutely so, not. So if I you mean, take the uh, if you take these drugs out of the hands of the controlled marketplace, which is what they're in right now, the prescription process is a very high, very highly controlled marketplace. Then it would make it so that you could just walk into a Walmart or a Walgreens or wherever and buy your hydrocodone or oxys there without having to have a prescription. If you don't have to have a prescription, if anybody can just go and buy it, that means there's more open market competition going on. It means the price of the product can come down that you don't have to go through some ridiculous process to acquire it in the first place. And I think that would, you know, if the prices come down, first of all, that means that the rest of us will be more safe from being robbed at the, the hands of some sort of drug addict. I'm not saying that life would become perfect for everyone. Obviously, drug addiction would still be a problem, but it would at least more be a personal problem, more something for an individual to, to struggle with and deal with, rather than having to destroy other people's lives in the process by beating slash robbing slash defrauding them, etc. Any thoughts, Dan? Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, you know, for me, I just can't do any of it. And, you know, I'm on the 12 step programs, I've applied them. And when I do and I work them, they work for me. But like you said, and I've heard other people, and I think you got a guy who was a former uh, agent, and, you know, the amount of money and uh, thievery, power, abuse of power uh, from uh, DEA. And all that, I mean, it's just it's just a big money-making market. I mean... Dan, thank you for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. Appreciate the personal story. Let's go to Mr. A in Savannah, Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live. Mr. A with uh, Ian, Johnny Ray, and Garrett. Um, so uh, I uh, wanted to first say, um, get well soon, Mark. Uh, I wanted to say that just to be again, clear, Mark is not a uh, a heroin addict. I don't, you know, he's just got a bad... Oh, yeah. He's I got guess. a problem with his voice. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I guess I should have made that a little more clear. Right. Um, but then I wanted to talk about, I normally call, and uh, I'm a little more anonymous tonight because that, that was a rule that my parents ever had was never to talk about their personal lives uh, when I was a kid. Uh, it's a funny childhood that I had. But, um, you know, the, my dad uh, was a drug addict, still is a drug addict. Mm. Um, it actually just ended my mom and dad's uh, marriage of, of 30 years, finally. Um they, 30 years and now they're getting a divorce but I grew up uh, and my dad was addicted to, to methamphetamines oh wow um, 
prescription medicine, um, so the, the uh, opiates, the synthetic opioids. Um, now, what kind of household was this? I mean, because, you know, when people think of a meth addict, they think of some sort of uh, starving loser who doesn't have money, but not all drug addicts fit that mold. Were you raised in an, aff an affluent drug addict household, or was it like a, you know, a trailer park? Well, well see, my, we, we, I mean, I grew up on 13 acres of land mm -hmm. in a normal home. My dad worked 70 hours a week at a mine. Uh, my mom, uh, she worked a full-time job, had a career in a, in a, as a professional. Um, mm. And, you know, the, my dad actually, one of the reasons that he was so addicted to the opiates is because he worked in a mine. Um, you'll know, you'll see that a lot of people who are addicted to the opiates are, are blue-collar people who do very strenuous labor and have a lot of body pain, and they end up getting, because of the pain that they're trying to treat, they get addicted to the, to the opiates. Now, my dad had had a lifetime of, uh, addiction, um, but I, the thing that I really wanted to call about is that it was never the opiates, it was never the methamphetamines, it was never the the mushrooms or the LSD or anything. Uh, nothing in my childhood uh, messed our life up as a family more than my dad's alcohol use. Mm. Um, my dad's alcohol use was that when he would drink. He would actually go out and live, and uh, he had a workshop behind the house, and he had a hammock that hung from the ceiling. Stand by, Mr. A. I want to hear the rest of your story and give you enough time to tell it, so hang on. We're going to come back to you here in hour number two. After the news, more with Mr. A and his drug-addicted and alcohol-addicted father. Of course, alcohol is probably the most dangerous of drugs, right up there with heroin. This is Free Talk Live. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and Black Forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to The Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand with Your Liberty Beat for July 1st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,327, silver at $21.12, and Bitcoin is trading at $655. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. on Sunday at 4 p.m. Support comes from My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. Or pick a jar up at Brave New Books. 
A person called 911 after witnessing a police officer get violent with a woman in Phoenix, Arizona after she was stopped for allegedly jaywalking. The woman was an Arizona State University English professor who was walking near campus when she crossed the street to avoid construction. The officer stopped Dr. Ursula Orr and demanded she show ID, but after not immediately doing so, he instructed her to place her hands behind her back, threatening to slam the professor, who was wearing a dress. The officer followed through with his threat, slamming Dr. Orr onto the police car, wrestling her to the ground, and leaving the woman exposed after her dress rode up. Dr. Orr kicked the officer in what she says was self-defense. The professor has been charged with felony aggravated assault on a police officer, criminal damage, and obstructing a thoroughfare. Dr. Orr, whose life has been dedicated to cultural studies, intends to fight the charges. A statement by the university defended the actions of the ASU authorities, stating they acted appropriately. According to a report by The Telegraph, Facebook conducted a secret psychology experiment on its users to find out how they respond to positive and negative messages without telling the participants. More than 600,000 Facebook users took part in the psychological experiment, which involved the social media site altering the tone of users' news feeds to highlight either positive or negative posts from their friends. The results showed emotional contagion, said Facebook scientists. When positive expressions were reduced, so were positive posts, with more negative posts increasing. When negative expressions were reduced, the opposite pattern occurred. The research proved that emotions expressed by others on Facebook are highly influential, a fact advertisers are very interested in. The Obama administration is seeking $500 million to train and arm Syrian rebels a project much larger than the secret training of hundreds of fighters at a CIA base in Jordan in 2012. The U.S. government claims they will only train what they deem to be moderate rebels. However, it is unclear how officials will decide the fighters' level of extremism. An activist in the northern city of Aleppo said the U.S. government wants Syria to enter into a new war between rebels and extremists adding that this move by the United States will only worsen the conflict. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, now with two locations in Austin at 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. And from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for July 1st, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On July 3rd, NSA whistleblowers Thomas Drake and William Binney will speak to a German parliamentary committee about specific details of the American surveillance on Germany. Jessalyn Radock, one of Edward Snowden's legal advisors, will speak on the conditions of Drake's testimony. The former NSA employee was previously prosecuted for releasing details on the NSA's activities. The committee is seeking information on how the data is collected, stored, and analyzed by the NSA and the British government communications headquarters. Mexican officials deny that they crossed over the U.S. border into Arizona Thursday and fired at Border Patrol agents while they were stationary in a patrol car. Mexican officials claim the gunfire came from the drug smugglers they were tracking, insisting they were more than 100 meters away when shots were fired. Vivian McLaughlin of the U.S. Border Patrol insisted the Mexican helicopter crossed the border at 5.45 a.m. on Thursday, firing at agents over an Indian reservation in the desert before returning back to Mexico. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, online at accountableauthority.com. This is Justin Armand reporting with the Liberty Beat. Well, today was an historic occasion in Pennington. That's right, Diane. The entire town turned out to honor Paul Webster, the area's one gay man with Pennington's first ever gay pride parade. Paul, a 33-year-old hardware store owner, was too shy to ask for a parade, but that didn't stop almost 2,000 residents from showing their support for his homosexuality. Mayor Sue Hallinan organized the parade and even chipped in some of her own money to pay for decorations. Well, I was channel surfing one day and I came across a program about the gay pride. Next time I 
went to the hardware store, I said, Paul, we're going to throw you a parade. And he just said, oh, please don't do that. I don't want that. I beg you. He just didn't want us to go to the trouble. Uh, he doesn't want to ride on the penis float. Uh, he gets motion sickness, so uh, we're going to have him hold the reins instead. And Penningtonians have already decided on a fairy tale theme for next year's parade. Oh, that'll be great. And if Paul has a boyfriend, they can both be dressed up as kings. Terrific idea. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Garrett. And, of course, we're inviting you to our Skype as well. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Plenty of time here for your calls and thoughts about whatever's on your mind. We've also got some other drug war-related news and kind of a, a little bit of good news about Mark Emery, a friend of Free Talk Live. So we've had him on the show in the past prior to him being put into prison for five years of his life for selling seeds on the Internet. We can talk more about his story, but he's getting ready to get out of prison. And, that is very good news. Yeah, and he's got his final blog post. We can share that with you. Coming up here in a moment, we started the show out tonight with a story about a former sheriff, the top sheriff of 2001, according to the American Sheriff's Association, or some group like that. Yeah, National Sheriff's Association. The top sheriff of all of the United States in 2001 apparently turned himself into a drug dealer at some point in his career, but you have to wonder, he's 71 now, at what point did he become a meth-slinging uh, drug dealer, somebody who was, uh, I guess, plying young men with methamphetamine in return for sexual favors. There's even under uh, undercover footage of the bust that they made where he begins to strip down in uh, in what appears to be some sort of a hotel room or somewhere with, this, uh, with one of his customers propositioning him for sexual favors in return for giving the customer methamphetamine. So uh, that's kind of what started the story, uh, the, the discussion now, which led into a larger discussion about drug addiction in general, hard drugs like uh, methamphetamine and opiates. We've had people calling to tell their stories. Even Johnny Ray has had some personal experience. Yeah, he had a story to tell. With some of this. We haven't really gotten into that fully, Johnny Ray, because we've had a bunch of people on the phones, including Mr. A in Savannah, Georgia, who was telling us about his addicted, drug-addicted father, who not only had problems with uh, some hard drugs, but also the hardest of drugs, alcohol. And you were just kind of getting started with your story there, Mr. A. Are you with us, Mr. A, in Savannah? Mr. A, going once. Mr. A. There you are. We have you now. Go ahead. Hello? Sounded like he was there for a second. I'll tell you what. I'm going to put Mr. A on hold. We're going to Hello? Call. Oh, there he is. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us now? Yes, I can. Great. Go ahead with your yes. your story about your father's uh, alcohol addiction. Um, so um, I, I wanted to put a human face on some of the other drugs that you mentioned. Um, my dad, he when he was on alcohol, that was the times that he was the worst. But my dad also did a lot of the psychedelics. My dad is an artist. He was, Not only did he work at a mine 70 hours a week mm -hmm. and worked his butt off, which, I mean, the methamphetamines and the opiates were probably the only reason he could function that way. Um, working in such hard labor, um, hmm. but the alcohol, um, when he wasn't on alcohol, he was one of the most creative people uh, you would ever meet. You know, he did pictures of, a, of what he calls the genie in the mushroom, um, where he would get high on the mushrooms and he would paint these pictures, this wonderful art. And, you know, growing up around that, that endowed me with, a, with, with creativity. You know, hmm. um, he told the best child stories. You know, he, he made up, he came up with these amazing stories about where cups came from, that there were moon cats that developed the cups uh, to get the water for, for their boss. And it's just all kinds of amazing things that came out of his mind. But the alcohol, uh, which is everyone is, uh, drugs affect everyone individually. You know, my mm -hmm. uncle, he, he died of HIV um, because he was addicted to heroin. He went to Chicago in the 80s and um, contracted HIV and ended up dying in 1994. Wow. The anniversary of his death will be July 11th, you know. Um, so 
every, drugs affect everyone differently, but in my experience, alcohol was the worst of them. You know, it, it, it really took my father away from me, the father that I knew, who was a great guy on pretty much every other drug, mm-hmm. uh, methamphetamine excluded, because meth, meth is, another, is much like alcohol and how it can make you act uh, as far as paranoia and aggression. Um, but, you know, alcohol is the worst of the worst. It's completely legal. You know, if it's there's so any true. gateway drug, it's the if there's any gateway drug, it's it's uh, the opiates that doctors prescribe, because once they once they say okay, well you can't take this pain medication anymore, they're going to go out and find a street drug that has the same pharmacological effect. If you understand what I'm saying, they're yeah. going to get hooked on heroin or something else if they cannot somehow get the drugs that help them to manage their pain, the pain that they've acquired from doing strenuous labor their entire lives. You know, my dad started working uh, in in heavy construction when he was a young teenager, you know. Um, what do you do about that? I mean, how do you, I mean, what do you do with a body that you've destroyed? I don't know. Uh, over time. Yeah. So, I don't um, know, but I don't feel you know, like opiates are the, are the answer. I mean, whatever it is that, that oh, can they, be. Sorry. They aren't. I don't. I don't believe that they are. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that there's a good reason to be addicted to a drug, but you have to have. You have to understand the human component of why people do drugs. Uh, I think sure. that's especially important uh, because once you dehumanize a drug addict, you can do all kinds of terrible things uh, to them and and sick cops on them and treat them like they're pariahs and just treat them like they're non-human. Uh, when when people do things, they do them for for a reason. Um, and yeah, and a lot, and a lot of people have different reasons. You know, there was the, the the study that we talked about. So I don't know, six months ago, maybe. Anyway, they had brought the drug addicts, uh, meth users, and crack users uh, into a hospital environment. They offered them like the best of the best methamphetamine, the best crack they could possibly purchase. You know, very pure, very good crack, very good meth. And they and basically they gave them a choice. They could take a toke off of uh, some of the best methamphetamine they could possibly get their hands on, or they could have five dollars when they got out of the treatment program. This was a program that was going to last several weeks, or the, the test, I guess you could say, the scientific test. And uh, and they also adjusted the amount of money that they were being offered at twenty dollars per uh, you know per session. Like they would take twenty dollars instead of doing the drug. They were taking the twenty dollars, and they, even though they didn't get the money right then, they knew they were going to get it later on at the end of the experiment. So they were willing to forego what appeared to be a very, very hard drug addiction in order to uh, to benefit themselves. So a lot of people take these hard drugs in an addictive capacity because their lives are that hopeless, their lives are that bad, and and or they've decided that their lives are that bad, and there's no way out, and uh, this is this is an escape. Uh, for them, this is a way to avoid the reality that they're dealing with. Whereas, if you know, all of a sudden a, ch- a better choice comes into the picture for these people, many of them are willing to take that better choice, even when addicted to these drugs. Supposedly, I thought it was fascinating stuff. Oh, I think I think it's fascinating as well. Um, but I think that I, I really believe that um, you know, there's also a lot of psychological things you know that, that my dad grew up with. My dad experienced a lot of. Uh, of abuse as a child. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, certainly that can result in some pretty messed up situations. Mr. A, thanks for your call and telling your story tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. And the toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And prohibition definitely makes a major impact on the pricing of different products, and it sends prices through the roof, of course, if we think of what it costs to produce these substances, but then what they sell for. And of course, even with prescription drugs, we're still dealing with patents, even though uh, you know they're coming from a laboratory setting. Um, so there is a breaking point at which people won't pay for for drugs if they get too expensive. But mm-hmm. as we see, they are still willing to, of course, even when the prices are exponential. But cigarettes and cigarette tax, um, there's a there's an interesting you know you can study the markets there in New York City. It's estimated that the majority of cigarettes are black market nowadays. Huh? That's interesting. People aren't willing to pay fifteen dollars a pack. Somebody is, right? I mean, some, somebody's sure, buying some legal, people are. legal packs. But, I mean, even then, at 15 bucks a pack, that's still a tenth of what the uh, caller earlier was spending on opiates every single day. So the legal market, even as regulated and taxed as it is, 
uh, can still be a lot cheaper than the black market and that, you know, you don't have too many people who are committing robberies to buy their cigarettes on the black market. Maybe mm -hmm. it happens in New York City, but in the rest of the country, black market cigarettes could still sell in many other places if they were being offered, but there's definitely an incentive to offer them in New York City. The toll-free number tonight is 855-453. You can tell us your story about drug addiction. Maybe it was you, maybe a loved one, and... You can share it whether it's happening to you now or did in the past. The toll-free number, 855-453+. Plus, we'll give you Mark Emery's final blog from jail. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make... Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Whoa. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. I'm running from you. Because you're scared of me. What am I being now? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's victimless crime spree. Watch it for free and order the director's cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is 
Free Talk Live. We've got room for you. Style in toll free and bring up whatever's on your mind. Toll free number is 855 450 free. That is brought to you by Pro XPN. That's 855 450 3733. Care about online privacy? Then take a look at Pro XPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your data meaning that your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online. Right now, they're probably logging all the websites you visit, all the search terms you enter for, in some cases, up to five years. Of course, it makes it easy for any law enforcement to get their paws on what you've been doing online. And maybe an administrator at the ISP that wants to know what you're up to. Maybe uh, the coffee shop that you're hanging out at. Somebody's poking around in your business. Maybe somebody's sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets, trying to steal your credit card numbers. All of these things can be prevented if you encrypt your data with ProXPN. So get the app for free at, uh, at uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Plus, Linux users, there's a bit of a different setup for you, but you can get ProXPN up and rolling with your system as well. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use our discount code FTL20 to save 20% from the price of the premium account which breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month when you order the annual plan. You get the ability to privately torrent with their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, and you get different servers around the world that you can connect to to, uh, to protect your privacy worldwide. Risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and you also don't uh, have logging. They don't log your online habits at ProXPN. So, great way to protect your privacy and do it on the cheap for 5 bucks a month with code FTL20 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. As we continue here, it is now Ian and Johnny Ray. Garrett has stepped away. I don't know if he'll be coming back. There uh, is a police standoff situation going on in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, and things like that don't happen very often in Keene, New Hampshire. Apparently, they brought out the Bearcat for the first time, or one of the first times, this uh, ballistic-engineered armored tank thing that the, that they've had and that have been so controversial in various different uh, police departments around the country so he actually has gone off to to uh, investigate to investigate and or record video and report from that scene so uh we'll hold it down here as we continue with your phone calls ian and johnny ray in the studio here in Keene. we've got christian anarchist gene is on the line in tennessee you're on free talk live gene Hey, guys, I just thought I would call and touch bases with you about what's going on in China. Okay, what's going on in China? Well, for the last two years since the new uh, the new premier took over, there's been a huge anti-corruption campaign that uh, the new premier is pushing on everybody. Now, of course, I don't like any government. I don't like the Chinese government. I don't like our government. I don't like uh, the Canadian government. As far as I'm concerned, they all suck. Mm -hmm. But... The big thing is, you know, we've got all this corruption here. We all know it. Is there any American who doesn't know that there's corruption going on in Washington, D.C., that there's every kind of vote buying and influence and, you know. Uh, You'd have to no be blind and completely ignorant to not realize how corrupt Washington, D.C. is. Yeah, it seems like one of the most yeah, universally. One of the most universally held beliefs amongst everyone in the world is mm -hmm. that politicians are liars and corrupt. Yeah, so you, and you've got banker bailouts to their buddies and everything. Okay, but in China, they're actually attempting to appease the people by throwing some of these corrupt, uh, whatever, I don't want yeah. to say that on the air. You know, those bums. The corrupt guys, yeah, those corrupt bums to the wolves. So mm -hmm. they are taking high government officials over there that, are, that have dirty hands, and they're actually arresting them and throwing them to, into prison. I guess some of them are actually getting executed. But there was yeah, but isn't that always just a people. show? I mean, anytime that happens, isn't that just a show from the new political power to try to get people to think that something's going to change? I mean, look at Chicago, for instance. How many of their former mayors are in a jail cell? Yeah, well, I'm sure that maybe some of it is for show, but, you know, the people over there are, are eating this up because hmm. the big, powerful people are going to prison. Interesting. These are not little, tiny, yeah, these are not little, tiny guys. There was uh, one that I guess just happened a couple of days ago where there was a, the top communist uh, official in this one region. They were in a, actually a communist meeting. They, you know, they had their little communist uh, monthly meeting or whatever it is. Maybe it's a weekly. I don't know. But anyway, they had the meeting, and the uh, internal investigator guys walked in the room, and everybody was absolutely speechless. You know, they were all silent because they didn't know which one of them they were there for. 
And then when they went over and they, you know, they laid hands on the top guy hmm. and told him, you know, you have to come with us because uh, you're under investigation. Um, you know, then everybody else breathed a sigh of relief in the room because at least it wasn't them, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, They've all got skeletons so in they, their closet, are, of course. Yeah, but, I mean, there's a lot of people going to jail over there for corruption, and hmm. they go for typically a long time. If it's really, really bad corruption, they'll get executed. Wow. Um, so, uh, but, and, and over here, how many, how many politicians in the federal government ever get convicted of corruption? Can you think of any? Yeah, you're right. Federal government is pretty rare. I, I can only really think of the governors in, um, or the, was it mayors or governors in Illinois? I think it's actually been both. Uh, Chicago governors yeah. have been troublesome and the, uh, the, or these, the Chicago these mayors. Feds, they're, the feds are untouchable. You can't do anything with them. Yeah, that's a good point. Every now and then the and feds the will bust corruption. local corruption. Like they'll bust, uh, you know, a bad sheriff or something like that. But yeah, it doesn't usually work the other way around. Yeah, or or some many, somebody will fall out of favor with the current regime. So that could be. But in usually usually in those cases they just resign. You know, it's very rare that there's yeah. any kind of prosecution. Uh, now you can't tell me with all the corruption that goes around in the city and the county and the state governments that there isn't some corruption in the federal government. But you don't ever see any of those guys going to prison. They're like. They, they're Teflon Dons. There's nothing <laughs> sticks to them. Good points tonight, Gene. At, uh, here in Mississippi, we had the Cochran versus McDaniel race. You know, and I, I mean, that's as filthy and dirty and corrupt as it gets, but you bet your bottom dollar that Cochran's going to go back to Washington and everybody's going to pat him on the back and tell him what a great job he did, you know. Gene, thanks so. for the call, man. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. Let's go to Robert in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live, the Inn and Johnny Ray. Hello, Robert. Hi guys, how you doing? Hey, what's on your Great. mind tonight? Go ahead. Hey, uh, you guys were talking about the sheriff over in Colorado mm -hmm. getting busted for drugs. We just had one, you know, uh, what? Somebody from the attorney general's office got uh, got busted for uh, drugs in New Hampshire. Really? Tell me more. It was well, I put it on your Facebook page there. Apparently, it's somebody from uh, the Rockingham district. Uh, or walking in, walking in Superior Court. This is uh, this is the second time that they've had to yank somebody out of that out of that courthouse there. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, attorney general uh, attorneys. <laughs> You know, just a quick tip, Robert, I don't know which Facebook you posted it to, but the best thing to do if you want Free Talk Live listeners to see your story ideas is to go to freetalklive.com, and that's where you can log in with your free Free Talk Live account and link up your Free Talk Live account to your Reddit account. If you don't have one of those, you can get one of those at reddit.com. And once you link those two accounts together, you can then actually submit content right there to the front page of the website rather than, say, posting it on our Facebook page where only a few people will ever see it or posting it to my personal Facebook page, where even fewer people will likely uh, see it. Robert, thanks for, uh, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. And don't forget to use those tools. They are out there to make it so more listeners of Free Talk Live can see what you think is interesting. So go to freetalklive.com and get interactive there. We'll get the latest from Mark Emery from his prison cell in moments. Free Talk Live. You've been lied to, lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income. Get potential 12 to 17% returns and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? 
Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter, rather than blending into the blah, 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 will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Is it ever appropriate to use violence to oppose the state? I can't say I would blame somebody for wanting to meet the SS at the front door with the clubs and the guns or whatever they could to defend their family. I wouldn't blame them. Gandhi went to jail. What if he had met the uh, English at the door with shotguns instead of going to jail? I don't want to talk about this anymore because, you know, it's just madness. I don't need to be playing these scenarios out where what am I going to do if this happens? or What am I going to do if that happens? I'm gonna, it's not a good mindset. I'm going to get the chainsaw out and cut a couple of trees across the driveway, and I'm going to sit out there with a 50-pound <laughs> bullet, and I'm going to pick them off. I'm going to pick them off. You know, It'll drive crazy, crazy nuts. I mean, you're going to die from high blood pressure yeah. and a lot of shiny guns. I'm a ticking time bomb waiting to go off, coppers. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Wolverine! Brrr. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you would like to discuss. We've been focusing tonight on drug addiction. Uh, what started the conversation was a sheriff, former sheriff, who was the top cop, the top sheriff in America in 2001, as named by the National Sheriff's Association, had a jail named after him in Arapahoe County, which is the Denver area of Colorado. Turns out he liked his methamphetamine. In fact, not only did he like to use methamphetamine, he also apparently liked to sell methamphetamine for sex with young males. Which, of course, you know, there shouldn't be anything illegal about what he was doing. Some people want to smoke meth, they should be free to do that. That shouldn't be a crime. No one is being harmed there. You could argue that he was somehow taking advantage of these people who were wanting to buy the methamphetamine. But... Just because the people bought the methamphetamine with sex doesn't mean they were being taken advantage of. Would he have been taking advantage of them had they been buying the methamphetamine with cash? Would that have somehow been a less advantageous situation? He had methamphetamine. He was willing to sell it to, uh, you know, it, it doesn't say how old these people were. But even if they were young adults, again, uh, you know, these they don't look very, very young in the, the or at least the one guy in the video footage of the undercover cameras that the cops busted this former sheriff with. He looked like he was in his early 20s. So young men can mean a fairly large range of uh, of young people. So anyway, that, that's what started the discussion, got into a larger topic of drug addiction and people's personal stories 
things that uh, they've experienced with drug addiction in the past, you're welcome to add your thoughts to the mix here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And there are a whole bunch of reasons that somebody like you might want a second passport or to renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing U.S. citizenship, and people do it all over the world. Whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy, protest against foreign policy, to protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or as a refuge. You might want to get a second passport or even change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com. Now, obviously, they take Bitcoin, so this is yet another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. PassportsForBitcoin.com. Ian and Johnny Ray in studio here uh, as we go back to your phone calls and thoughts. Let's go with Rusty in Houston, Texas. Rusty, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Yeah, hi, y'all. Uh, I just wanted to comments kind of on the drug topic. Yes, My uh, stepmother was actually busted by the DEA for running one of those uh, prescription mills. And oh, really? When I was younger. Yeah, but I remember when I was a kid, uh, I used to go to the clinic that she had, and there was 30 chairs in like the waiting room, and they were always full with people standing up hmm. just to get to see her, to get uh, the magic you know, sheet of paper where they can get their prescription. But she had ran the operation for like four to five years, and then apparently the DEA uh, came in and busted her. But uh, she, I, I thought she was kind of meeting the market demand for it. Of course. She was flush with cash. Uh, she would give us chores as kids, like doing the yard. And I remember one time pulling up like two weeks, she gave me a $100 bill. Damn. For like, like 10 minutes of work. But you're saying uh, they went after her, huh? Yeah, they eventually, apparently, they sent in two undercover people. She had made the top ten list. Uh, I think she was, like, number six uh, in the country for kind of doing this stuff. Wow. And they sent in two undercovers and ended up busting her. The thing is, she had uh, so much cash that she could afford these lawyers. And she got it where, uh, once she got out of jail, which was, I think, like... Uh, under three years, mm-hmm. I think she served like a year because it was her first offense or something like some, something like that. She went back and tried to get her license, and during that process, she would write uh, fake prescriptions in her name and just kind of opened up shop again while she was waiting <sighs> to get her license back from the board. Wow. And they got her again, mm. and uh, I think she, she get, she's getting out within a month or two now. How many more years did she go in for? Uh, I think she only had like three and a half, um, but she's been doing good behavior, so I think they're going to drop it down. That's why she'll be getting out in a month or two. So just to clarify, right. she initially was sentenced to a year in jail because it was her first situation. Presumably she was out on probation. She violated probation. Is that why they put her back in? Yeah. Or did uh, they bring new charges? Well, they she was... Uh, she was on probation, but then uh, she got busted. With, so I think they violated, got her for a violation of probation, and they mm-hmm. brought new charges. Uh-huh. They, they had, she was being watched, and she had gotten out. And, uh, you know, suddenly she gets out, and then there's all these new prescriptions going through at these pharmacies. And it was a big deal down here. So some, some of the pharmacies that she had used had gotten wise to it. So they reported her, apparently. Wow, man. But. So it, had, it she, had she had she waited, brother. just to clarify, had she waited until her license to write prescriptions was reinstated, would she have been safer then? Yeah, she would have had certain protections and, and things along those lines, but um, it was a long process, and because it had a lot of publicity on it, uh, she didn't think the board would go her way. Like oh, she, she always appeal and things like that. And so they put yeah, her back in for another three years, you said? Another three and a half years? Yeah. Wow, that's rough, man. Thanks for sharing that story, man. Uh, Johnny Ray, do you have any questions? No, I was just going to add that I would assume that with her not being on the scene, I'm I'm thinking that people are still going to be able to get their drugs from somewhere. Somebody's Of course. It's like cutting the head off the Hydra. The, the, the war on drugs is a joke. Rusty. Yeah, uh, my stepbrother actually went into like uh, 
you know, apparently he he's uh, selling uh, marijuana and stuff like that now, which is uh, uh, taken after his mother. Mm-hmm. Because when she was out, she had gotten into that. And she actually got addicted to some of the prescriptions she was using. So she developed health problems along those lines. But he's fallen in her footsteps is what it looks like. Rusty, thanks for sharing your story tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. It doesn't have to be a drug-related story. That's not, you know, there's not a, no mandatory topic. It's just that when this issue comes up, people can relate to it. There are a lot of people out there in the United States and around the world who have either personally had struggles with drug addiction or has known someone in their immediate friends or family who have done this. This is a, an almost universal topic at this point. And that's, you know, that, that's good talk radio, right? To talk about things that people can relate yeah, to. Oh, yeah, it's salacious. I'm sure the re, the uh, the listeners are eating it up, if you'll pardon the expression, eating it up. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's something that strikes home um, because this is so common that people have had these issues and if you haven't, for whatever reason, if you're one of the few people out there that hasn't had somebody close to you become drug addicted, um, you know, it's still fascinating to listen to the stories. And the, the, the it's tragic. It's always tragic, you know, whether it's a, a personal battle with just the addiction factor where you've got the at least our one of our callers earlier. He didn't steal from anybody to feed his habit. He just took from his own bank account money he'd already earned for himself Mm -hmm. and essentially cleaned out his bank account. That's a story that's preferable to hear to kind of the typical story of where somebody is addicted to drugs will steal from their own grandmother, they'll steal from their own children, they'll steal from their wife, their husband, they'll steal from anybody, they'll steal from stores, etc., wherever, in order to get the uh, the money to fund their drug habits. Junkie's number one job is to get junk. It's so true. And, uh, you know, I, I, as far as people that, that need help, obviously the system, I don't think, generally helps very many people. But every now and then, Johnny Ray, you'll run into somebody who swears up and down that if they hadn't been arrested, that they would still be addicted to drugs and that their time in a jail cell helped them. What do you think about that? I would believe them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I, I would believe them. A lot of people can't change until they reach rock bottom, and being jailed and humiliated like that and strip-searched and so forth can be the catalyst that some people need. Does that justify the war on drugs? Is no. That, why not? No, it well, doesn't. Let's talk about why not here in a moment. 855-450-FREE, because if it's helping some people, shouldn't it be done to everyone? 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com the TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can bring up anything that you would like. Just dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features on our website. You can create the content, as I was discussing earlier. You get to put whatever you want on our website. And then other listeners can vote on whether they like or dislike your suggestions. You get to vote on things as well over at freetalklive.com. So head on over, check it out, get interactive. Again, freetalklive.com. You want to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there? Check out BuzzBox at coffee.freetalklive.com. You get your free pound. All you have to do is pay the shipping cost. And when you sign up, you'll get on an auto ship program where you can actually adjust how often you'd like your next pound to be sent to you. Maybe you're a heavy drinker, you can make it more of a frequent shipment or a less frequent shipment over at coffee.freetalklive.com. But BuzzBox isn't just your average killer coffee, and this is great coffee. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica, and shade grown as well. This is a great product, but there's also something else they're doing that makes it extra special. They're allowing people around the world to buy into their co-op. Plus, they're teaming up with World Vision and Free Talk Live and listeners like you to offer microloans through World Vision. Help people change their lives by offering folks in poverty an opportunity to make their lives better with microloans. And uh, every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, you get that free pound. Every 10 people is going to finance one microloan. So get on the uh, the program right now. You can cancel your subscription anytime. Get your free pound by paying just the shipping cost at coffee.freetalklive.com. Uh, before we go on with your calls and thoughts, Johnny Ray, we've been talking about drug addiction quite a bit here tonight. And I brought up the point that some have made in fact, uh, one of my my ex girl, one of my ex girlfriends, uh, who was an addicted uh, a pill addict, basically, she wasn't taking heroin. She was taking crushing up uh, oxycodones or something like that, and shooting them up. She says that uh, when she she's she's grateful she went to jail. She it was part of that hitting the rock bottom thing, and she's not the only person who has said that they're glad that they went to jail. She didn't want to go to jail, but ultimately that kind of helped her realize she was at rock bottom. She's doing better today. She's been clean for a number of months. Uh, should I be happy about the war on drugs now because some people have had a good experience with jail? 
And no, because it can't it can't work that way. The way that it's supposed to work is that the the threat of going to jail is what keeps you off the drugs. It's the, the people that go to jail are supposed to be examples for everybody else. Because the people who get caught and prosecuted and go to jail and have a and 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 the people who get caught and prosecuted and go to jail are a very small percentage of the actual people out there doing drugs. It's true. So if you have to get caught and thrown into jail, then it ain't going to work because there's not enough there's not enough room in the jail, there's not enough police officers to arrest you. True. And 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 loads of people who do get caught and go to jail, it doesn't work on them. Yeah, it's certainly true that jail is not a deterrent, right? That uh, for, for a lot of people, if you want to get high, you're going to get high, and, and jail's not going to be a factor. You know it's a possibility, but you feel like you can avoid it, that you won't be detected, and most people obviously just do whatever they want to do as far as drugs are concerned. But for those few people who do feel like they've benefited from having their freedom taken from them and thrown into a jail cell... Well, you could always hire someone to do that, right? Like, you could hire somebody to kidnap you and put you into some sort of a drug rehab facility against your will. If if it was indeed the case that for some people that was effective, and I believe these people, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell somebody, oh, well, you know, had you been out on your own, you would have gotten better on your own. I don't know. You know, for some people, this may have been an important step in their journey towards recovery. And I don't want to take that away from somebody. But what I don't want to do is send somebody to jail who doesn't benefit from that because there's plenty of people who don't. You know, for, for every one person who says they are grateful that they went to jail, there are plenty of people who, who have been in and out of jail right, and not, are still on, hooked on drugs. Yeah, or they'll get worse. You know, they'll, uh, they'll go to jail with a drug problem and come out with a drug problem and no home to go to mm -hmm. you know that's not going to make things better mm -hmm. so there's plenty of situations like that as well and what about the people who don't have drug problems yeah, that's the other thing the jail system the punishment mentality doesn't discriminate so if you get caught johnny ray and you know if you get caught tomorrow with some marijuana in your pocket you're going to jail just like somebody with methamphetamine in their pocket. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, maybe you're a heroin user. You're not, I don't think. But uh, maybe you're a heroin user, but you're like the weekend warrior, like we talked about earlier. There was a guy who called Free Talk Live to kind of disabuse us of this notion that everybody who's a heroin user is this hopeless addict. This guy said that he wasn't an addict, that he was just a weekend user, and that he had it completely under control. This guy doesn't need to, you know, he's not going to get better from going to jail that's not going to help him he's productive he goes to work he gets his work done during the week on the weekend he boots up with some heroin uh-huh so the drug user is treated the same way as a drug abuser and I see. that's one of the things i liked about the vice.com article uh with rick van wickler who's the head of the jail here in cheshire county uh the a aka the keen spiritual retreat that he pointed out that people and it's not just regular people, but people in government don't understand the difference between a drug user, a drug abuser, and uh, there was another category as well, like, you know, just a dabbler, ultimately. You know, people who use drugs for different reasons, they use drugs in different ways. The system doesn't take that into account. If you have the drug, you get the same punishment as someone else who has the drug, whether or not uh, they're addicted, whether or not that punishment is helpful to you. or it's It's not about helping you. If it were about helping you, they would work with people with drug addictions. They would find solutions that work for people with different levels of involvement that, you know, people that want help. And many people who are addicted to drugs know that they are and they uh, they want help, but they're too afraid to, to ask for it. They're too afraid to admit they're a drug user. They're worried about the political or the, not political, but the uh, the potential consequences, the legal consequences and who can blame them. Jersey is in Colorado. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Hi, Jersey. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Um, well, I've been an addict since I was 12, and I'm 32 now. Um, and I've been going every day. I stopped for a year and a half when I went to rehab. But other than that, I mean, I, I pretty much use, use everything. I'm what I'm what's known as a garbage head. A garbage head? So, um, yeah, um, as someone who's willing to take whatever, anything, wow. I have no, I, I don't 
have anything that I won't do. When did you start? When you were 13, 12, was it? I, I started, yeah, I started uh, using drugs when I was 12. What um, was the first drug you used? With, um, tobacco and marijuana. See, there you go. Tobacco, it's a gateway drug. We need to ban tobacco, Johnny Ray. Will that one work? <laughs> That'll stop. That would have. That could have saved I'm, Jersey. I'm probably, more addicted, I'm probably more addicted to tobacco than anything else. Hmm. I mean, I've I've done everything. I've been to hypnotists for that. I mean, I I I feed heroin. Um, I I've done the Suboxone. I sell the Suboxone. I mean, I've been in the. I was a crackhead for eight years straight. And then. Jeez. Um, I mean, I, I can only that, imagine some of the things you did. Out. I mean, because we actually had a crack user, a former crack user on the show as a co-host once when we were in Florida. And I mean more of a user. But Johnny Ray, you said you'd smoked it in the past, but mm-hmm. it didn't. I didn't get the impression that you were hopelessly addicted to I it. S- I smoked crack one night, and it was because I was uh, there was this girl who was a crack dealer that hmm. I was kind of sweet on. <laughs> How'd that relationship work out? It, did, it didn't go anywhere. So, um, but we actually did have somebody who was addicted to crack, and some of the stories she told about, you know, what she would be willing to do to get some crack was pretty scary stuff. Oh, it's um, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, I went to rehab, and because of that year in rehab, like, I, it just, I, I got remorse for, I, I, I saw where I went wrong and, like, how many people I hurt and all the things, like, that I knew I wasn't. And it it changed me in that way, but I still use drugs. Um, I'm I'm just I'm not the same type anymore. That's willing to. I mean, I, I, when I when I was willing to do anything for it, I mean, I I wouldn't have cared. I would have tried to hit anyone. How how, uh, how how often are you life. doing drugs these I days? Uh, I use heroin every day, and wow. uh, right now I moved out to Colorado. And I, I'm from New York originally. Uh, I moved out here two, three years ago, and now I've been using crystal meth. So, Jeez. Um, it's not heavy. It's not heavy like it is. How here. are you paying for your Colorado habit nowadays? I mean, it it sounds like you've got a pretty heavy uh, habit. Are I, you? I, 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 I um, I mean, I. I uh, hustle a little bit here and there. Yeah, you're selling. So, I mean, that's the most common thing. If you, I mean, thank goodness you're not robbing. I'd rather have I mean, uh, drug drug users selling I know, drugs. I, mean, I wouldn't do that. Thanks, Jersey, for calling, telling <laughs> your story tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. That's pretty common. I mean, if you are a drug user, a lot of a lot of ways. Uh, one of the most common ways to uh, support the habit is to sell other to sell drugs to other users. More coming up here in moments. Hour three is next. You tell your story. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, June 30th, 2014. Here's the news. Radio VR News. President Obama is set to announce his nomination of a former Procter & Gamble CEO to head the embattled Veterans Administration. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. Until he left last year, Bob McDonald was PNG's CEO, running a company whose products are in 98% of American homes. He also was a top cadet at West Point and served in the 82nd Airborne. But the reason the president's choosing him to be veteran secretary is his record managing a globe-straddling enterprise. And there's little doubt the sprawling VA needs some tough managerial love. Already struggling to deal with the Iraq-Afghanistan influx of veterans, the agency's reeling from a scandal in its health care arm over widespread and possibly deadly appointment delays. Mark Smith, Washington. The Supreme Court is set to issue a long-awaited ruling on the final day of its term. Jerry Bodlander reports on the controversy over specific contraceptives involving Obamacare and Hobby Lobby. Two years after the court upheld the constitutionality of the president's health care law, the justices are set to rule on a key aspect of it. At issue is the requirement that birth control be included in the preventive services that are part of employees' health care plans. Hobby Lobby and other companies are challenging the requirement, saying some birth control methods violate their religious beliefs. The justices have never declared that for-profit corporations can hold religious beliefs, the company's claim a 1993 law on religious freedom extends to businesses. Jerry Bodlander, Washington. Diplomats and politicians see an urgency for U.S. action in response to Islamic militants in Iraq. Now, David Malendi reports a new Islamic state has been announced. Former U.S. ambassador to Iraq, James Jeffrey, told CBS it's a dire situation. It's a huge terrorist threat. Also on Face the Nation, Republican Senator John Barrasso called the militants the worst. They are the richest, most powerful, and most savage group of terrorists in the history of mankind. Ambassador Jeffrey says that demands immediate action. The administration needs to step up its act. Also on the show, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin cautioned. There's no appetite for us to get boots on the ground or go back into that country any way, shape, or form. But he does support security operations to protect the U.S. Embassy and Americans in Iraq. David Melendi, Washington. The Marine Corps says a corporal who was declared a deserter after allegedly faking his own kidnapping in Iraq a decade ago has surrendered to U.S. authorities and is now facing a hearing at Camp Lejeune. Correspondent Jackie Quinn has the details. Ten years ago, Corporal Wasef Ali Hassoun disappeared in Iraq and turned up a month later in his native Lebanon saying he'd been kidnapped. He was sent to Camp Lejeune and was about to face a military hearing in 2004 when he disappeared again during a Christmas visit with relatives. Hassoun, a naturalized American citizen who served as a translator in Iraq, is now in military custody. His brother had said Hassoun was a victim of anti-Muslim bias in the military, something the Marine Corps denied. Jackie Quinn, Washington. Shots were fired on legendary Bourbon Street in New Orleans yesterday, and two people were seriously injured. Ed Donahue reports on the street violence that shocked the Big Easy. The shots were fired early in the morning, but Bourbon Street was still crowded. New Orleans police are looking for two suspects. Nine people were shot as a result of two cowardly young men trying to hurt one another. Police Chief Ronald Surface has a message for the two suspects. I hope that they're listening. I hope that their friends are listening. I hope their mom and them are listening. We know a little more about them than they think we know. The chief says he's not sure if the shootings are gang-related. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu is pledging a swift response from law enforcement. I'm Ed Donahue. New York State has announced an ambitious plan to lower the rate of HIV and AIDS by the year 2020. Correspondent Julie Walker reports on Governor Cuomo's latest initiative. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the state is aiming to reduce new HIV diagnosis to 750 by the end of the decade by boosting testing with state-supplied home kits, expanding treatment with less costly drugs, and reducing new infections. He made the announcement at the Gay Pride Parade. It's uh, an ambitious goal, but again, it's fitting. Uh, New York State paid a terrible, terrible price for this disease. This year, the state expects 3,000 new HIV cases. In 1993, there were 14,000. Julie Walker, New York. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Well, 
Well, our own Rebecca Mera takes us on a tour of the Olympic Village. We have a full-size bed, oh, yeah? lounge area, shower, yes. plenty of space, which is great because I'm constantly having sex in there. The Village is a temporary home to the world's most physically impressive athletic men and women. It was important the Olympic Committee to give them a comfortable, state-of-the-art area to f*** each other's brains out while they're not competing. We have a, a pool where they can have a sex, a theater where they can have a sex. All these athletes are hot, horny, ready to go. Mm -hmm. They deserve the best. I was in Vancouver and where I got eaten up by this French speed skater. I have to say, these facilities are even better and I'm going to try to f*** a Japanese guy. You've spared no expense. These athletes deserve the best. They sacrifice so much for their countries. They deserve to be able to f*** until their b**** and p**** can't take it anymore. And these facilities won't go to waste. Once the Olympics are over, they'll be converted to a resort where Russian businessmen can come to f*** their prostitutes. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Take control of the airwaves here. If you like, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Johnny Ray. And Johnny Ray's Game of the Week still to come here tonight. So stay tuned for that. Of course, you may call in and bring up anything. Toll-free number again brought to you by Pro XPN. It's 855-450-FREE. And Skype in to the show at username LRN. Dot FM. We have been, for those of you just tuning in, talking quite a bit about drug addiction tonight. Wasn't my intention for the show, but that's how Free Talk Live goes. It, my intentions don't matter. It's your intentions uh, that matter. And uh, we started talking about a, a former sheriff in Colorado who turned out to be a meth dealer. A former, like, decorated sheriff. Like, the best sheriff in America, according to the National Sheriff's Association, in 2001. Turns out he was a meth dealer. So uh, that led into a larger conversation about drug addiction in general, and we started hearing personal stories, people calling in with their personal stories and experiences uh, regarding using drugs and being addicted to them. Uh, even Johnny Ray has had some experience with some some pretty generally hard drugs, methamphetamine, crack yeah, cocaine. Frowned upon, some frowned upon drugs for sure. We're going to go back to your calls and thoughts. We're actually going to go to jail where Rich Paul is on the line. An appropriate night for a call for you, uh, from you, Rich, and I know that that's not because you were listening or anything you can't listen there at the uh, the cheshire county jail at least not at this time uh and we actually haven't talked to you in well over a week due to the porcupine freedom festival happening last week there was no way for you to call the show at that time so uh welcome you're currently in jail on a vop violation of probation after having gone to jail originally for uh for selling some pot go ahead welcome back well thanks and uh well actually one of my issues does um dovetail pretty well with an addiction discussion and it's uh it's kind of an over overreaction or over generalization of the courts with respect to addiction and that is um the, one of the things that they ordered me to do because my original charges were for selling pot was to go through chemical dependency therapy mm -hmm. okay and I have absolutely no need of that. I'm no more a marijuana addict than I am a unicorn, mostly because neither marijuana addicts nor unicorns exist. Um, <laughs> since marijuana is not an addictive drug. So basically what they're trying to, trying to do is to force me into a therapy that will force me to claim to be an addict. And yeah. uh, this is something, um, my defense against that in court is going to be that that is a gross violation of my, of my conscience, uh, because I, I don't believe that's, that's the case. And I'm actually going to use the uh, OA Big Book as, mm. one of the exam as, as one of the reasons that they shouldn't be doing this to people in the chapter Two Lives that talks about how if somebody is not convinced he's an alcoholic, you shouldn't try to force him to go into therapy or to go to it meetings. It seems and obvious, alcohol. right? I mean, like, to, to the outsider or to an outsider, it seems obvious that you don't want to force somebody who 
doesn't know they have a problem or doesn't have a problem into a course that is dedicated to people who are looking for help because that'll screw things up. You know, you don't want to put somebody who is is doesn't want to be there in a class of people who do have a useful purpose in in being there. It's a terrible idea, but really it's done to fatten the pockets of the providers of these classes, right? I mean, they just want to send them business. Um, well, personally, it's, uh, yes, there are professional therapists who, who get rich off that, mm -hmm. and of course it's to the professional therapists that the, uh, that the courts force you to go usually, um, and, and you're right, it does screw up the, the system. The ironic thing is that, you know, I used to go to OA meetings for a long time, and uh, I started when I was 18, and the one of the things that I saw when I was in Hawaii was that the courts there had forced so many people to go to OA meetings there that literally you would go to an OA meeting and there would be nothing, I mean, there would be people selling drugs in the parking lot, there would be absolutely nobody who was interested in staying sober except this one guy who would come up to you if you seemed serious about being sober and he'd say, hey, if you want to go to the real meeting without all these court ordered people, go here at this time. Wow. And that's where the serious people are, but we hide from all these court ordered assholes. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, Rich, uh, let's get a quick update from you while we're at it, because I know during the week of the Porcupine Freedom Festival, there was an expected hearing about your violation of probation. You haven't gone through the full hearing yet. Uh, you're in pending that full hearing. So that was apparently postponed. Do you have a new date? Uh, yes, the new date is July 10th. I believe it will be a, uh, a 1.30 hearing. And uh, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen there. Um, I do know that it's scheduled for half an hour, mm -hmm. and what I intend to do is going to take a lot longer than half an hour because I intend to put nine witnesses on the stand uh, at least. Now, is this uh, something that your court-appointed uh, public defender is going to go along with? Is he okay with that that plan? Uh, he he has seemed okay with the plan when I was when I discussed it with him. Um, but he, as far as I know, the uh, the request, the our witness list has not yet gone to the uh, to the prosecution. So it, it looks like there's going to have to be at least one uh, delay. But I believe that the direct hearing will still happen. If for no Rich, I'll tell reason, you what. I'm going to put you on hold. It's getting re your connection from the jail is getting really bad and to the point where it's un unairable. So I'm going to put uh, Rich on hold. We'll see if we can hook him up with uh, Derek J. Freeman to get some more information from him uh, during one of the breaks and and you know relay whatever is necessary. Obviously, if you're up here in New Hampshire, uh, you can support Rich by showing up at his hearings in person. Or if you live in the you know the New England region, you can always come out in person. But you can also uh, you can also support Rich by writing him in jail. Uh, you can go to mailtojail.com. That's mailtojail.com. You can write to Rich there, and you don't have to do any of the work. All you have to do is write what you want to write to Rich. The uh, the gentleman behind Mail to Jail, he's the one who takes the time to print it out, fold it up, stuff the envelope, address the envelope, stamp the envelope, and drop it in the mail. So all of the real work in sending a letter has been done for you. All you have to do is compose the letter at mailtojail.com. And I have to say, it makes such a big difference for people out there to send activists uh, mail in jail. It's nice to have something come in to to know that you haven't been forgotten about to know that there are people out there who appreciate you and the activism that you've done so if you've thought about you know if you've listened to rich paul on the air with us here and you've thought oh, i should write to him but you never really got around to it go ahead make a note go to mail to jail.com tonight uh, when you get done with the show or just go right now do it during the show and uh, and send something to rich you can what i like to do with uh with rich especially but what I like to do is proselytize my all my favorite uh, science fiction and fantasy novels because oh these, yeah these guys uh, they they're a captive audience so if you got a bush <laughs> a book you want to push then then uh, they they they're they're pretty bored and books are uh, books are really appreciated yeah by they prisoners. absolutely are I, and I feel the same way Johnny Ray I mean I I ne almost never have time or make time I never make time to do books in real life. 
So I always feel bad when somebody tells me about a great book that they're reading because my my usual answer is that, well, I've got other books that I've already got stacked up that I haven't gotten a chance to read uh, read through yet. But I always say, you know, I, I usually will say something like, well, if I go to jail, just send me a copy in there and I'll be sure to read it. Right. It's not a problem when you're in jail. So uh, we'll keep you in the loop uh, with the Rich Paul case as that continues to develop. We've got Kevin on the line in Colorado Springs. Kevin, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Hi, how are you guys doing? Kevin, good. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Um, yeah, um, I'm a, uh, what I would call a clientele manager. Um, I believe it's a fancy word for drug dealer. Um, the only reason why I'm like this, I've been in pain for the last six years. I have what's called um, RSA, rheumatoid bundloarthritis. Try going to the doctor, you know, prescribed Roxy, the Roxy Codone. And the state and the government makes it so hard. I'm on Medicaid, and I can't even go to a pain management doctor because there's a huge waiting list. Stand by, Kevin. We can bring you back here, and you can tell the rest of your story. There's no shortage of drug addiction stories, especially ones regarding prescription narcotics in this country. We'll continue with Kevin's story, and yours are welcome about whatever's on your mind on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit, or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. Toll free here, 855 450 free. Join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And with you tonight in the studio, it's Ian. And Johnny Ray. Hey, coming up here in about three weeks, just a, just a little bit less than for three weeks, Mark and myself, on July 19th and 20th, we're going to be in Chicago. I've never been to Chicago before, um, so I'm excited to attend the North American Bitcoin Conference. And apparently the North American Bitcoin Conference has never been held in the Midwest before. No Bitcoin conferencing has gone on in the Midwest. So this is a great opportunity for people in the Chicago region to come and see great Bitcoin-oriented speakers like Tony Gallippi of BitPay, Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus, Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante, even Liberty-oriented speakers, will be in attendance here. Uh, plus Vitalik Buterin from Ethereum, Jeffrey Tucker of Liberty.me, Christina Gol- or Gorlick uh, from Cloud Hashing, and more. You can go to btcchicago.com, grab your tickets with Bitcoin. They're only $100 worth of Bitcoin over at btcchicago.com. Get your tickets now. July 19th and 20th will be at the Chicago McCormick Place South Building for the North American Bitcoin Conference as we continue here Johnny Gray and I talking about hard drug addiction, and we had Rich Paul on talking about the ridiculous forced drug treatment programs and how that results in very bad uh, things happening for people that actually want to get help. They have to be in there amongst people who don't want help, and that's like mixing in the bad kids with the good kids at the government school. Ian, can I interrupt you for a second? Uh, Bitcoin. The I, I've haven't really been paying attention for the past week or so, but mm-hmm. the the price seems to have jumped up a fair bit. Yeah, uh, and I and I'm assuming that's because of the the auction of the of of the Mount Gox coins that were seized. You think that would drive the price up? That's what people were saying. That's what a lot of people were expecting. Why? Why would uh, flooding the market with uh, bitcoins for sale drive the price up? Doesn't make any sense to me. I I I, I, I should maybe try and find a rationale for I, that, but look, that, I don't, that that is the most that I know of. The most significant thing that's happened in the environment over the past week was this auction. Well, you know what? I saw news today that Newegg.com is is now accepting Bitcoin. That's nice. That's pretty big news. Newegg's a major internet retailer that sells computer parts, basically, and electronics. And their customers have been clamoring for Bitcoin for uh, for quite a while. Sure, that would so do it. That's a big deal. You know, when it, whenever the Bitcoin price moves, I don't try to figure it out. I mean, <laughs> how could I know what, what people are doing? This is an international currency. So, you know, even though Newegg has come on board, Newegg's not an international company. They mostly do business in the United States. So, you know, is Newegg going to affect the worldwide price of Bitcoin significantly? Or are there more things in play here? And I imagine there's a lot more in play than just Newegg and, uh, and, and I said, other I developments. Said, I said Mount Gox, but I believe it was the Silk Road, right? That was that they're auctioning Silk Road oh, Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I think I, I read you as saying Silk Road, even though you did say Mount Gox. Yeah, the, uh, the federal government is auctioning thousands of Bitcoins that they seized from the Silk Road, allegedly. So I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know when the auction's going to be over with. I don't know what the status of that is. Have you heard? Are they still in the process? No. Maybe I should have looked, checked all that out before I opened my big mouth. Did you hear that they at one point had been collecting emails from people who were interested bidders, and in order to be an interested bidder, you had to have two hundred thousand dollars that you were willing to put up. Yes. And then at one point they hit uh, reply all apparently to all the people that were supposed to be anonymously bidding on this and sent out every single one of their email addresses to every other one of the bidders yes yeah so i don't know if that's going to bring the price up or down but it's pretty embarrassing 
for something like that to happen. Hey, let's bring Kevin back on here. Kevin in Colorado Springs, you were telling us about your uh, your drug addiction. Yes, um, it's pretty bad. Um, I wake up every morning and do what's called a goofball, and that's crystal meth and heroin mixed together. Wow. How do you uh, do that? Um, do you have a special pipe? Well, I mean, because you know, a lot of people will no, will, sh- I, I, will shoot heroin. I, Go ahead. I I I I bang it. What does that mean? You bang it. Uh, I I inject. So you inject crystal meth. Now that's new to me. I've never heard of that uh, before. Is that is that fairly common or not so common? Um, not so common. Um, most people even. Hardcore tweakers think that's hardcore. I would say that's pretty hardcore. So you, what do you do? You like melt it down in a spoon together and then shoot yeah. them both in the same syringe? Yeah. Wow, man. Mix it together. And, uh, what, are you, and what are you doing to support bad. your habit? How are you paying for your habit? I'm a clientele manager. A clientele. Oh, you used that term before, and I couldn't quite make out what you were saying. You're saying you sold you sell drugs. Yes. Fancy gotcha. word for it. Okay. All right. And do you feel like this is going to be a long-term uh, gig for you, or do you think you're going to be stopped by your addiction, hitting rock bottom, being arrested? I mean, where is this going to end for you? Because usually uh, it doesn't end too well. And why do you do it? No. Um, I'm in pain all the time. And it started off, you know, where, you know, I, I hustled, you know, to – get rid of my pain but you know a lot of people depend on me every day otherwise they're very very sick you know so it's a it's a service you know you know (laughs) yeah well i understand that there are always going to be people who want that service but you know drug dealing doesn't tend to be especially harder drugs doesn't tend to be a lifelong vocation you know at some point you're probably going to want to get out of it for this guy I used to work for this guy, and uh, day before Thanksgiving, swat, booted down the door, and you know, shotguns in her face, and uh, yeah, I mean, it could that could be how it ends time. for you, or you know, it may end you, you know, just, just going rock bottom with your addiction and not being able to even handle selling anymore and just becoming a, a junkie. Well, uh, it's gotten to the point where I cannot hit anywhere and my old lady i was having her hit me in the juggler and she doesn't really like doing it wow that sounds really uh really intense kevin i hope you can get some help man because it doesn't it's not going to end well i don't think thanks for the call tonight i appreciate it i don't know if that was true but it sounds pretty awful yeah kevin he sounded he sounded like uh not quite the the full man that he once was he's he's, he's kind of his voice was a little weak, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if, you know, I wasn't sure if Kevin was a crank or not, but I think that we've had some honest calls tonight here mm-hmm. and, you know, that, that whether Kevin was real or not, there are people in his situation and it's not an uncommon situation at all. Let's go to Nathan in Texas on Skype. Nathan, you're on the air. Wow. Some of these, in call, some of these calls are pretty intense. Yeah. No kidding. Well, uh, first, I wanted to thank Johnny Ray for his service. Uh, I, I missed some of the live casts, so I'll need to download uh, the, the podcast from last week. You're, yeah, you're, you're welcome. Um, I've still got some actual uh, – I've actually got some fixing to do on a couple of things that weren't Johnny Ray's fault. There was some technical recording difficulties that we had here, uh, unfortunately, in the studio. So uh, we'll get to fixing those. The, the archives are there. You can listen to them, but I'm hoping to improve the quality of a couple of them a little bit later. I don't know why you were calling, Nathan, but hopefully it wasn't to talk about our archives. Stand by. We'll come back with whatever your point was here in moments. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Whether we get a chance tonight or later, we will also talk about Mark Emery getting out of federal prison. It's going to happen here sometime this summer. He's got his final blog that he's written up over Cannabis Culture Magazine, CannabisCulture.com. We'll share that with you and you can take control of the airwaves here on free talk live this is dan pillett do you owe the irs money you can't pay are tax debts crippling you i've defended people from the irs for over 30 years i've helped thousands and i can help you too i wrote the book on irs settlement and i'm telling you there's no such thing as a hopeless case call 834 no tax to finally get free of irs debt with the irs's new programs there's never been a better time to solve your problem call 834 no tax That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
The TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. And Johnny Ray. We've got Skype, too. You can Skype on in. Our username is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request if you haven't yet done so to that username, and then we'll accept it, and you'll easily be able to connect with us from that point on in the future. Hey, do you need focus? Are you feeling fatigued trying to get that extra edge when it counts? There's a lot going on in our lives these days. It's easy to get busy, lose track of things, and be tired. So don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut and give you the focus you need and help you get things done? Check out Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how Modafinil from ModUp.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out ModUp.net and look into it for yourself. It's fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality Modafinil 
at an amazing price. And an even better deal if you pay with Bitcoin, 33% off. As a matter of fact, plus if you use code FTL, you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So go to ModUp.net, get great service at a great price, and check out Modafinil, ModUp, M-O-D-U-P.net, and don't forget code FTL for the bonus. All right, let's go back to Nathan. He's in Texas. Nathan, what were you calling about tonight? CNN and Johnny Ray here. Uh, hello. Well, when Johnny Ray mentioned the whole uh, putting people in jail thing, I immediately thought of Singapore, which uh, I, I kind of had a vague idea that you don't want to have drugs in Singapore. But I found an article about it in The Guardian that talks about how they have this whole kind of, you know, ultra or uber government war on drugs there. Um, people who are caught with drugs get sent to rehab. They, uh, If they complete rehab, they may not get a criminal record, but if they keep doing it, they'll get sent to jail. And drug dealers get executed, apparently. Um, there's some, I forget the name, but uh, it was some story a few years ago about a guy who was, uh, I think, heroin or something, and he was on death row. Hmm. And, uh, so, and the thing is that supposedly, or at least the way they argue it, is that they have lower drug they have lower drug usage rates than a lot of European countries. Um, like, for example, uh, I think uh, cannabis eight percent in the UK versus point zero zero five percent for Singapore, hmm. and then similar similar things for other drugs like heroin and opium and so forth. So I, I'm not saying this is okay, but you know, certainly you could compare with Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Like for example, I, I brought up a list of countries by opium addiction and Amsterdam, the Netherlands is pretty, uh, they're pretty far down on the list. Uh, I would say they're pretty, I would say most, they're better than most European countries. It looks like, so you could, you could say that, but you know, there is this argument out there that if you just kind of, you know, put a lot of government money at it, uh, throw people in jail, you know, and crack down harsh on people, like you're saying, that that'll help these people. Well, I don't necessarily think that uh, that it will help those people, especially if you're going to put somebody to death uh, or punish them very, very severely for, for what they're doing. And I question the statistics as well. I mean, if, if you're relying on the government for honest statistics about drug use, I think that that's, uh, that could be a mistake. Uh, it could be, but uh, they do get they do get some attention because some of the surrounding Asian countries have like you know the triads and things like that, and it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to be as much of a problem there. I mean, they apparently they've been doing it for more than twenty years. It was uh, I don't know how the I don't have the exact date, but uh, it started more than twenty years ago. And I guess the only reason they get the attention is that it, it seems to have worked. And you could argue, well, there's other reasons that. Drug addiction is very low in that country. The weird thing is that the majority of the population seems to support this. Uh, this, like, like it says, there's a, in, in polls people support putting this guy on death row, and it's just unbelievable. You know, but when you hear these these horrible stories, like you've been saying, I guess I can I don't approve of it, but I can kind of understand why some people would think that extreme, you know, like harsh extreme measures are necessary because it's it's just it's such a horrible thing sometimes. I, I am suspect that that the the threat of jails or death even will cure a, a drug problem in a country. But even if it worked, I would reject it. You know, people people according to me, people have the right to do with their own bodies what they want to, and or or sell. You yeah, know, I, have I have voluntary um, business dealings with anyone that they want to. And so I just I just reject that solution on on that based on that logic. I agree with you, but uh, it does. I think Ian has hit on something that there are some people who I think. See, my opinion is that Ian really hit it when he talked about how he keeps asking the callers, "How are you supporting it? How are you supporting it? What's your payment method?" I think that really hits on it for me because if the drugs were legal, then they wouldn't cost as much. People wouldn't have to commit crimes to support their habits. And mm -hmm. what would happen is you'd get more people like that caller who drained his bank account. You know, people would basically just, you know, drug, you know, they would use drugs and they would drive themselves into poverty. And at that point, nobody's going to voluntarily support your habit, presumably. So 
you know, being on the street certainly seems like a better kind of rock bottom if that's what they need than, you know, being brutalized and thrown into cages and so forth. So I did pull up an article from theguardian.com um, written, I think, by someone in Singapore talking about Singapore's drug policy. Michael Teo wrote this back in 2010. He cites the 2008 World Drug Report by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime saying that 8.2% of the UK population are cannabis users. In Singapore, it is 0.005%. Excuse me, cannabis abusers. So I wonder, does that when, when they're ter terming someone an abuser, does that mean someone who can't stop using the drug, or someone who's actually uh, a drug abuser, or is I it think, just, I think, just users? I think he means just users, because the I, Wikipedia on opiate use just talks about people who've used in the last year. That, that's just my guess. If you look at, I haven't read the 2008 World Drug Report, so like you said, maybe the statistics are, maybe they're not completely accurate. It just but, doesn't make sense. I mean, they're, they're so low, it seems insanely low. 0.005% for cannabis use or abuse, they claim, here in uh, or in Singapore. Ecstasy, apparently 1.8% in the UK, 0.003% for Singapore. So, you know, the suggestion there is that there are only 0.2% more, 0.002% uh, more cannabis abusers than ecstasy abusers in Singapore. I mean, it's just none of it makes any sense to me. I just don't understand how... You know, the, the threat of death for dealers would stop drug use in Singapore. It does, well, it's it also connect. it's a comprehensive program because, like, they have education, propaganda, then mm -hmm. they pay for rehab. So there's a what lot about of other... alcohol in Singapore? I wonder how abused that is. Oh, that's a good point. That'd yeah. be interesting to look at. But uh, thanks a lot and have a good night, Thanks, guys. Nathan, for the call tonight. Appreciate the info and the heads up about Singapore. I didn't remember that it was Singapore that had that uh, policy. I thought it was Thailand. Maybe both of them have very restrictive policies, but I don't really know. If you want to tell us more, maybe you've got personal experience, you've lived over there uh, in that part of the world, our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We'll hold off on Mark Emery's story for another night, his blog post, the final blog post he's making from federal prison before hopefully being released here within the next few weeks uh, we'll get that on a later episode of Free Talk Live, perhaps tomorrow night. Johnny Ray, I want to make sure we make room for your game of the week. You were not on the show last week due to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and I know that you had previously started a new game in the week prior, but you didn't really have too much of a chance to get a grasp for it, get a feel for it. What's your game of the week this week, Johnny Ray? It's called Pandora colon First Contact uh, from Matrix matrix games mm -hmm. and it's a 4x expand exploit explore exterminate 4x strategy game in a sci-fi setting it's an homage to my favorite game from 1998 sid meyer's alpha centauri mm. doesn't quite live up to it um narratively wise stand uh, by we're going to continue the discussion here with johnny ray's game of the week you can share your thoughts as well uh, whether it's on games or drugs or whatever news is out there that you want to share with us, you can bring up anything here. Take control of Free Talk Live in the remaining moments next. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and black forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. 
at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can now purchase a -a one-of-a-kind product not available anywhere else, a meatless burger dry mix in four delicious flavors. With our new Oregon Trail Foods vegan burgers, all you do is add water and fry. They need no refrigeration. They're packaged in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber for a long shelf life. They're non-GMO. They're gluten, soy, nut, and chemical-free, but they're loaded with flavor and a good source of carbs and protein, yet low in sodium. Flavors include Italian, spicy Mexican, six vegetable, and black bean olive. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010 and order today. Eat them every day, take them camping, or save them for an emergency. Check them out at 30dayfoodsupply.com and click on the vegan burger icon. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where all of our products are produced in Oregon by Oregon Trail Foods, 30dayfoodsupply.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for your call, your thoughts. If you dial right now, the toll-free number is 855-453. We're going into Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. It is called Pandora First Contact. We'll uh, talk about that. You can share your thoughts here, though, on anything, even in the, in the remaining moments here. Toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And Free Talk Live is brought to you by Keenvention. Maybe you attended the Porcupine Freedom Festival last week and you just can't get enough of being in New Hampshire. Want an excuse to come up here later on this year? Check out keenvention.info for an event that's not like Porkfest. It's different. It's uh, more intimate. There were maybe about 100 or 115 attendees last year. I don't know what to expect this year. It's the second year. Hopefully, we'll have a little bit more. I, I don't want it to grow to grow too much, though. I want uh, Keenvention to remain an intimate affair where everybody's in the same room. Unlike Porkfest, where there's like a zillion different things going on, Keenvention, it's all in the same room. You're either in the convention room or you're kind of out in the hotel lobby, and, and that's pretty much where you can be. You can also go into town and do things there. Or you're up in your room doing goofballs. Uh, I hope not. I really hope not. That doesn't sound like a fun thing. I, I can't imagine someone would come to Keenvention to do goofballs, but you never know. Um, but it's a it's a good it's a good event. Johnny Ray, you attended last year. You actually hosted one of the panels that mm-hmm. was presented. 
You can actually watch uh, the Johnny Ray's panel and every other panel discussion that we had at keenvention.info, the 2013 edition. It's all there, the full video from every panel, every speaker. It's all up there. Why is Keenvention different? It's a convention that focuses on activism. You know, the Free State Project puts on two great events every year. They put on the Liberty Forum in the wintertime and the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which we just finished up last week in the summertime. They're great events, but Keenvention does something different from both of them. We create an event that's all about activism. Because you can have a hotel convention if you go to the Liberty Forum, and it's a great one, and you should go to the Liberty Forum. But it's not about, it's not focused on the activism hap happening in New Hampshire. They bring in guest speakers, big names from around the country and around the world. Keenvention, we don't do that stuff. We don't need any fancy pants speakers. We've got activists to talk about activism and their experience here in New Hampshire. So it's a great place to meet some of the names that you hear, like Derek J. Freeman and others, you know, Dave Ridley, a lot of the names that, uh, that you know, you've heard on this show over the years. Many of them attended Keenvention in 2013, and I expect many more will attend uh, this year. So it's a great excuse to come up and check out Keen, check out New Hampshire during the fall, a uh, different time of year. And come up and learn a thing or two about activism going on up here. Go to keenvention.info. Oh, yeah. And I meant to point out that the early bird price is still in effect. I had said it was good through the end of Porkfest, but I'm still considering this basically Porkfest because it's kind of like Porkfest wrap up week for me where I'm trying to catch up on all my emails. So basically, I'm going to raise the price on the Keenvention tickets as soon as I get caught up on my emails. And I'm getting there. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Probably at some point during this week, the price will go up. So if you've been thinking about getting Keenvention tickets, you can still snag them now for just 40 bucks or the Bitcoin equivalent of 40 bucks at Keenvention.info. So Pandora, first contact, you had touched the game slightly, maybe for about an hour last, what, two weeks ago when you first mentioned it? Uh-huh. But we didn't have time to really talk about it. You didn't really know much about it. Now, I presume you've had a chance to dig in a little deeper? Yeah, a little deeper. I Is this a phone game or a computer game? Good question. PC, Mac, and Linux. Got it. I, was, I came to the game. I got it on Steam. Mm -hmm. And I came to it because... I heard about a, another game from Firaxis that's coming out. Firaxis is they they own the Civ franchise now, which mm. is which is uh, the the Sid Meier and the Alpha Centauri, which is like I said before, Alpha Centauri is one of my favorite games of all time. And there's a game, Civilization Beyond Earth, is coming out, which is their homage to Alpha Centauri. Uh, Civ is a game where you pilot a a civilization from the dawn of time up to the present time and then alpha centauri carried that on into the future but alpha centauri was different because it had a narrative baked into the game that played out um in in one of only a few ways mm -hmm. every time you played the game as opposed to civ where the narrative is emergent you know you the 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 gameplay kind of the gameplay and your relationship with other players determines how the story unfolds alpha centauri had a had a great sci-fi story right in the heart of it and so i learned that 17 years later if my math is right uh, Firaxis is going to be making a, another Another Alpha Centauri style game, but it wasn't out yet, but I got so excited about it, I started looking for uh, something else to satisfy, to scratch that itch, and I found Pandora First Contact. Okay. And I I can't recommend it. Um, the story is... I mean, it's not good. It's... it's it's okay, and it and it and it kept my interest for a while. And the the it's been lauded for its clean interface, which it certainly has. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, Ian, when you play these strategy games, there's so much information to process. And, too many options. Too and, much going on. And so many and and so much agency or capability for the player to tweak this or that that you've got to dive into menus upon sub sub menus mm -hmm. and sub menus, and it's difficult to navigate around. Pandora First Contact is really very streamlined, and everybody has has con has has appreciated that about it, as I did too. It's an attractive game. It it looks a little bit. It reminds me of Fallen Enchantress, which was a Civ style game, but based in a fantasy universe. You've got uh, these aliens roaming the landscape, and and you can interact with them. They can they they start out uh, generally peaceful towards you, but they might get hostile depending mm -hmm. on on how 
how much you kind of alter the landscape that they're living in. If you go, if if you if your your faction, you're building your faction up, and you're changing the landscape and and cutting out all this alien fungus in order to grow your own earth style habitat, then that might cause the aliens to the, the, the native life to kind of rebel against you. Sounds like the movie uh, Avatar. I mean, the, 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 the planet in Avatar was called Pandora. I don't know if you recall. Did you see that film? No, I didn't. James Cameron, uh, it's his recent 3d epic action film. Uh, it happened what, like four years ago now. It's been out for a while. It was like one of the first big hit 3d movies and what you're describing sounds like the plot of that movie. The uh, humans come to this planet. They start sort of raping it of its resources, and uh, the the natives don't like that very much. Uh, yeah, sounds uh, interesting, and mm-hmm. it's a big 3D hit, I remember. Um, Pandora is... But what was wrong with the game? I mean, so you said you can't recommend it. You said the interface was clean, that the game looks good. Mm-hmm. Where does it fail? It, for me, it it fails in 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 getting me to come back. Mm. Re- replayability. Yeah. Or wait, did you finish the game and you you don't want to come back after you finished it, or you just don't even want to come back to the game during the first playthrough? I don't want to come back to the game during the first playthrough. So this is a bad game then. So what's what's wrong with it? It's it's Ian. It's not it's not necessarily a bad game. It's it's twenty dollars. It's, right it's not right for Johnny Ray. It's twenty dollars, which I would say is Pricey. five to ten dollars too much. Yeah. I mean, it looks pretty. That's an online price. You're not even getting a box or anything for that. Yeah, but nobody wants a box except for you. <laughs> You're the only one hanging on to those uh, those 20th century values. I really don't have many many games in boxes, uh, you know, except for old games. Um, the 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 my point that was there, Johnny Ray, that manufacturing games has certain costs involved in it. When I see a twenty dollar price tag, I think. Oh, you know, somebody paid to ship that somewhere or, or print a disc and throw it in a box. And these things have costs. Why should a game cost that much if it's only being distributed online? It, it should be less, I think. I see. Well, you know, um, um, I guess some of these games um, have a lot of have large development teams. I don't That's think true. I don't think this is necessarily one of them. Uh, could be if a game is expensive. Obviously, it's got to be expensive. You know, game expensive to develop. It's probably got to they got to recoup those costs somehow. But you'd think well, that online purchases would be cheaper than an in-store purchase. Yes, you would. But when I see a twenty dollars price tag on a game, I think this is a this is on the low end of a mid-priced game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 kind of games that a, a, a standard price for like a new anticipated game sixty bucks. Yeah, forty nine ninety nine to fifty nine ninety nine, yeah. and that's been that way since I was a kid. I remember paying like sixty bucks or fifty three bucks for Super Mario three in nineteen ninety one or eighty nine or whenever it was that that came out at Kmart. So the price point of a brand new game hasn't really changed that much over the years. Uh huh. Um, yes, that is so. But uh, but so I would consider twenty dollars to be to be kind of cheap. But even so, this one is. I would say it's twelve, twelve to fifteen dollars. Ten to fifteen dollars mm-hmm. is is the right price for this game. They tried really hard with it. Um, with how with, soon did you get bored? How, after how long did you say, "All right, I'm putting this down. I'm not coming back." How many hours did you give it? Two hours. It's a bad game. <laughs> Pandora, first contact. Thanks, Johnny Ray, for uh, warning our listeners to stay away. It's no Alpha Centauri. All right. Well, uh, I'm sure you'll be telling us about those when they get closer. Yeah. We'll be back tomorrow night online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Millions of Americans are irrationally feared dead following a train derailment near Wilmington, Delaware. Less than 200 people were aboard the train, but because no names have been released yet, countless more are being imagined trapped inside the wreckage by worried parents and overly anxious friends. And the list of imagined victims is growing by the minute. From brothers-in-law who live in Delaware, who usually drive but could possibly have been on that train, to friends who went to Delaware on a business trip and may have been next to the tracks for some reason when the train derailed. And sadly, we're getting reports that even those who have never been to Delaware are now also among those irrationally thought killed. 
Oh, and we are just now getting word from Homeland Security that they're now warning people their fears may spiral into a wholly new fear that their loved ones never existed at all and are just byproducts of a drug-induced lucid dream in which their consciousness is currently imprisoned. Such a shame since this is reality. There is nothing beyond this to believe otherwise. It would be folly. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on Earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,326 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $649. Antiwar.com reports, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko has announced he is abandoning the eastern ceasefire outright and ordering new attacks on the secessionist rebels in the region. Poroshenko vowed, we will attack and free our lands claiming there was no point in continuing the ceasefire because the rebels had shown they weren't going to support his peace plan. That plan involved unilateral disarmament and surrender to the Ukrainian military in return for a promised amnesty. The rebels said they did not believe the amnesty would happen and did not trust the Poroshenko government to negotiate after their surrender. With Ukraine looking to